So, welcome back to Runaway Bay Cricket Club for the second semi-final of the 2018 Australian Championships. So here we have an all-Queensland affair with uh, tradies you can't trust from here on the Gold Coast, taking on the second 11 from Ipswich, which is west of Brisbane. Both these sides are uh, double national champions, so a lot of experience and a lot of success in these two teams. They've met each other before in a national final in which uh, Tradies came off the winners that day. Tradies you can't trust will be the side batting first. Marty Henderson, an Australia, LMS Australia representative, opening the bowling for the second 11, and I'm joined in the commentary box by Peter Bowman. So, Pete, uh, who's your pick for this game between these two uh, world-famous sides in Last Man Stands? I think I, uh, I don't know whether it got picked up in the coverage earlier, mate, but uh, head says second 11. My heart says traders you can't trust with the home ground experience. I think, uh, excuse me to uh, those people out there for my huffing and puffing, just ran out to the wicket and back again, showing that six games of cricket for me this week might have been a bridge too far. But, um, yeah, Marty Henderson here to open the bowling for second 11. So Marty, uh, representing Australia with a plum. Over in England. Oh, the... what a beautiful ball. Great wow. Great start there. One Is of the things, sorry, one of the things I would have said about Marty's bowling, he's had that ability to tail the ball away and into the batsman, um, nice and late. If, any, if the first game's anything to go by, if you can stay stump to stump, you're really going to get a lot of action with the ball today. Yeah, inside edge onto the pads, so that'll be the first run. Big appeal from the second 11, so... Marty Henderson fired up here and he'll be well known to Last Man Stands players and viewers around the world. Performed heroically over in England, big moment player during the World Series in Chester in August when Australia reached the final against Sri Lanka. Seeing pretty well the entire Australian team have been here again at the uh, various teams across this Nationals beat. It's great to see how much all those guys have bonded. There was a lot of man love there the, on, on the opening night, mate, uh, when all the team came back together. So really is a great experience for the boys. Eight days in Chester in northwest England at the beautiful Chester Borton Hall Cricket Club. It was a fantastic event there. I, I was amazed at, um, at, at how the boys came together so quickly in that, uh, in that uh, competition, given they were such fierce rivals at Nationals over so many years. Absolutely. It just shows the power of... Uh, Sport and last man stands in particular as a forming mateship across teams and play it all in the right spirit. And these teams both know each other so well, played each other several times down the years. Would have been about seven or eight tournaments in a row that they would have both partaken in. And they've both been to world championships in other countries in England, in Barbados, in South Africa. So a lot so of that. Flicked experience off the legs here. there, racing away down to the boundary. Will he get there? Oh, beautiful effort. Yes, well, just knocked that inside the boundary there, O'Connell. We were, uh, uh, my team this competition, Rob, the NCT8, Newcastle, Canberra and Toowoomba boys, um, came up against second 11 yesterday and were well beaten. We, uh, I think certainly, as most people know, this side bats and bowls from one through to eight. I had to come up against a short ball barrage from uh, from Vaughan and Thinner yesterday. Some of the fastest bowling I've certainly faced in LMS over the last seven or eight years. Vaughan coming on to bowl now. Very quick. The shorter of the two fast bowlers here for second 11. Oh, they're straight in again. Tucks the batsman up. Well played though. On the move against um, Vaughan. I thought that was an interesting... Uh, Interesting play first up. Yesterday, as I said, on the synthetic wickets. Probably a little bit short from Vaughan. Oh, lovely ball there. Just opens the face, pushes it out through cover. One scored. Wind just picking up here a little bit uh, in uh, at Runaway Bay. Really comes into play, doesn't it, Pete, on this on this field in particular? Oh, wow. 
Not much of an idea on that one from uh, the batsman. He's bottom edged it. Almost a French cut down through leg side. So at the moment, tradies you can't trust batting into the wind. How much of a factor do you think that's going to be in this game, Pete? Well, ball down leg side. Wide ball called there by umpire Warren O'Rourke. Rock. Uh, listen, Rob, I don't think it's going to be as much of uh, an issue as we've seen in the in the past few days. I think it, the wind's certainly not as strong. Um, it has been... Uh, has changed direction a little bit. At the moment, it feels like it's coming from the left of screen. Fallen in, right arm over again. Or way down leg side. So that's the second wide for the over. That's three runs. That's poor bowling there from, from Vaughan. I sort of think um, he probably needs to take maybe... Just a little bit of pace off and get that ball into that area just around off stump. A lot of value there for the bowlers today. Uh, Jared Austin on the Facebook page there, uh, Rob. Up the tradies you can't trust. Bunch of legends. Oh, he's certainly a legend himself, that Jared Austin. Uh, tradies captain for several Four years. Four runs there through point. Lovely ball. Took him over to Barbados back in 2015. <laughs> I remember them playing at the test ground there under his leadership. So I could see him commenting and... Uh, Showing that he's not playing with tradies this tournament. He uh, played with older rack, mate. Um, he did. This year. That's where all the uh, legends eventually retire. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So two overs gone, 15 for none is the score. Dane Seed and Reese Finn opening up for uh, tradies you can't trust. So if you haven't already, please share the live feed on the Facebook page to uh, all your friends in, that uh, love cricket. Oh, there we go. That, that's what I was talking about, Rob. Getting close into that, that area there. Just that movement away hits the seam nicely. Great bowling there from Marty Henderson. You can hear in the background the uh, all hell Conor McGregor song, isn't it? <laughs> this uh, Tradies You Can't Trust theme song, so good to that'll inspire them early on. Right on over again, very compact. Oh, and again, that's twice now. He's just playing a little bit late. Coming easy, back for two there. Easy so. two. It's a good start here from Marty Anderson showing his, showing his class. I think this is one of the things that you'll see from these two sides that day, Rob, is they're not going to be reliant on just hitting boundaries. You're going to see a lot of twos, potentially even threes. Absolutely. Um, very different uh, approach to how... Ocean 12 went out today and you know they may get a bit of criticism there for just going too hard and being too aggressive too many chances but that's the way they play their cricket and that's Absolutely. where all their LMS success has oh, been oh a lovely shot there upish but that should make oh yes four runs there good good shot there from Risfin through extra cover moves on to 10 off 6 balls now you'll be happy I would think uh, with that one that he hasn't uh <laughs> Hasn't exactly hit them out of the middle to start, the innings. I would expect here from Marty one a little bit wider. Wide on the crease, and there it is. It's the single to the covers there. Marcy Henderson fielding off his own bowling. So the next World Series, as we've been asked a lot about it, this, uh, this tournament, by especially by all the... Uh, Players that played over in Chester in England a few months ago. Well, the next World Series is going to be in, in 2020. 2020. Still to uh, 2020 indeed. The uh, venue and exact date still to be confirmed, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. One of the things I think uh, on the back end of that, that World Series, uh, Rob, is that there's certainly been some genuine interest around the country for guys on how do I get involved. I know in Canberra, we had a couple of lads uh, who are currently playing first grade cricket uh, in Canberra sort of say, how do I get involved in LMS and how can I get involved in the World Series? And I think uh, not with uh, all due respect to the, the boys who are incumbent, they're going to have to work very hard, I think, over the next couple of years to, to maintain spots. And, um, and, you know, who knows? We might end up with an Australia, Australia A uh, you know, side uh, set up, mate. Absolutely. Well, you know, there are a few... Uh few older players in that Australia side at the tournament who I think will be a bit nervous but you know they're all they're all just such guns with bat and ball that I, I'd back them still be there in two years beat or at least at least the majority of them oh mate I back them as well I back them 100% but I, I just am saying there's going to be guys knocking on the door true a lot of a lot of those players do look a lot older than they are though <laughs> 
so don't be <laughs> misled by their looks when it comes to selection in two years. Okay. Uh, do you? So 24 for none after 3.1, so a solid start here for tradies you can't trust. Into the leg side there. They're looking for two. They'll come back easily. Stephen Smith saying, let's go Marty. Sherry Jacqueline, Brody Kenyon, yes, you can see him keeping there. You could see the uh, former Australia captain supporting the last man to the semi-final. Absolutely. Big shout out to Steve Smith and we look forward to seeing you back in the Australian side very soon. The boys need you. Absolutely. There you go, Liam Berry, get him Marty. Liam Berry, one of the uh, New Zealand players that's over here for the tournament with Court Short, who flew over from Auckland. Yeah, we had the, uh, the uh, Auckland boys. I was having a chat to them yesterday. I've recently uh, moved across the ditch for a, for a spell, uh, Rob, and uh, there's certainly some interest in uh, my neck of the woods of getting some LMS going as well. So the boys from Auckland have said they're happy to come down and help. So Great stuff. Yeah, junior cricket coordinator, I believe, are you not? Manawatu Cricket Association, mate. Greatest cricket association in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, big shout-out to... Uh, Got a shot there, but straight to the fielder at backward point. To uh, Dave, James, Fedu and Amy in the office. Uh, I will be back there next week. So four overs gone there. 30 for no loss. New Zealand, a beautiful country for those of you that haven't been there. It's amazing. They've said it's been uh, quite dry over there the last sort of 12 months, mate, but it's still so much greener than what we're seeing over here in Australia at the moment. Absolutely. And some real... Uh, Legendary last man stand sides and players over there. Very social blokes. Good standard of cricket. Cowtippers back this year, I believe, uh, over there. Was it Cowtippers who took out the... Cowtippers did indeed. Came over the ditch, over the Tasman. About, f when was it now? Three years, uh, four years ago. cut there, backward of point. Just the one. They were a very good side, that Cowtippers side. Came here and they were, they were class above. The Australian teams that year, one in 2014. Then 2015 was won by the side that we're currently seeing in the field now, the, the second 11. So, a oh, few years it. now since uh, the side batting traders you can't trust have actually won a national title. And we've seen a shift in their side this year. A few of the older heads have uh, been moved aside, it seems, and a few of these young guns have come in, including the two that we're seeing batting out there at the moment, Dane Seed and uh, Reese Finn. It's the new generation of the tradies, but we've still got a uh, Travis Harker in the side and Lydon Gibbons. Oh, played officially through the onside at the tinny there in the deep. Just the one. Yeah, and Travis featuring again uh, in the bowling. Um, love to see uh, him flighting the ball down there. Absolutely, he's a terrific bowler, Travis Harker. He knows this wicket like the back of his hand as well, being the president of this cricket club. Absolutely, and big shout out to his whole family, to be honest, for the, the great work they do all around the club here and certainly providing great food um, throughout the, uh, the week. Absolutely, big shout out to Rebecca and Brianna. Yeah. Brianna's actually got three exams at school tomorrow, so she's trying to study in, <laughs> study in the kitchen in between making about 700 chicken schnitzels a day. <laughs> great effort. So 35 for none after 4.4 overs. Oh, oh, is that going out to the deep? Is it going to carry all the way? Oh, it's just on the boundaries. Oh, down. yes, and Marty is very happy. Oh, oh, oh that's, of, that's a big work, wicket early up, pumping up the captain. Bit of a send-off there. That was uh, a... <laughs> he <laughs> really meant something to Marty Henderson there. Did very well there, the fielder. It just... That was that issue hitting into the wind there, and it beat. He really got hold of that, and it just sat up in the wind, just stayed inside the rope. It's certainly a refreshing breeze coming through there, but as I said, it's not as strong as as uh, as the last couple of days. Certainly down in the bowl here, below some of the the pitches we've seen at the back. Um, I know yesterday we um, it was howling across the from left to right. It was a terrific catch. There can't have been much in that from our angle here. It's hard to see how close he was in, but it really looked like it was maybe just a matter of inches inside the boundary there. 
It's one of those ones that uh, our uh, our friends parked under the trees over to the right there would uh, certainly be letting us know about it if uh, if there was anything uh, suspect. But uh, as with all things in uh, in LMS, you you certainly put the trust on the fielder out there. Um, they've done the right thing. I'm really looking forward to seeing Dinner to come on to bowl um, soon. Absolutely. He bowled two of the fastest short balls I've seen <laughs> ever yesterday. And uh, I was just taking everything just to get out of the way. Oh, roll the fingers over the top of that. Yeah, so the new batsman, a man known to, uh, to many around the LMS community, he's played with multiple sides over the years. He's travelled to uh, play overseas with LMS as well. He's done stints in England. Jordan Reno. Uh, let's just watch this ball first. Oh, wide-ish, down on one knee. So you trigger Reno off the mark there. He's a very uh, mature young man. He actually uh, was involved in umpiring uh, LMS World Championship final at the tender age of 17 back in... Uh, 2010, so wow. impressive young man. Scored a 94 earlier this week as well uh, for tradies. Oh, lovely delivery. That ball coming I down to us. It's going to be a chance to slow up, though. Um, here, I think. Oh, will it show off? Just yes. reaches the boundary. Marty Anderson runs. runs around for no avail. Looking a bit puffed there. A few too many bourbons and cigarettes last night, I think. <laughs> think that uh, you can't question the man's ability to just take every ounce out of his body though that, that World Series I think was a classic example for the boys back to back to back games for them Absolutely. so Corey Marshall a little bit loose there Corey sort of rolls the fingers over the balls and, and, and relies really on trying to put the ball in the right spot that's him squeezed that one out Did. 23 off 16 now for seed a little bit faster with that delivery Square, square drive. Shot. He's picked the gut beautifully a there. Shot there. Well, Marty Anderson's not going to be too happy with that. He's just run all the way down to the keeper's end and now going to pick up from the boundary from backward point. That was a solid looking shot there from Dane Seed, who's, who's beginning to get going here. 27 off 17 balls. This is fast turning into an important knock here, Pete. Absolutely. What do you think's par today, mate? Oh, I think it's. Yeah. A lot of quality batting in the second 11 lineup, and they, they also know this pitch well. They know how to bat here. Um, they'll be nervous, I think, chasing anything over 160. Yeah. And I think anything anything under 145, they'll just think will be easy pickings with okay. their batting lineup. With yeah. Their airports. Well, listen, I think in general terms, I think 130, 140 is par. Um, I think anyone that puts a score on over 160 today would be unlucky to, to lose. Um, but as you say, I, I think one of the things we saw in our game yesterday with with uh, second eleven is they just carved us up early, um, and it wasn't slogging; it was just great cricket shots. And I think tradies will know that though; they'll know that they need to. Well, as we're seeing, bowling stump to stump here today is probably far more efficient than trying to uh, to bounce people out or uh, get a bit f smart with it. But Marty's certainly one of those guys with that little late tail in his bowling. And again, so, stump to stump. So he's bowling out here, Marty Anderson. His start of his fourth over, he's bowled three overs, one for 18 so far. So a great start for him. For me, Pete, I think there's 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 four players in the side that I think it will ball, ball down to in terms of match winners. One of them is bowling right now, and he's, he's bowling good spell. Mm -hmm. And he could have a big impact with the bat, Marty Anderson. Yep. The other's the keeper, Brody Kenyon, who was yeah. exceptionally unlucky to not make the Australia World Series side because... Yep. He's regularly been one of the top batsmen at Nationals each year. Great keeper, but he got injured during the tournament last year. He did his hammy, which really affected his chances. And he took that hamstring injury over to South Africa as well in the World Championships there. So that really affected his selection. He's going to yep. come out early and bat. And I think Brody Kenyon's innings today will be, will be massive. Yep. And then, of course, you've got Brody Dwyer in there as well, who um, you know is always there and thereabouts and, uh, and was in that World Series team. Absolutely, the opener in the World Series team, the left-handed Brody Dwyer. The other, the other two players for me are on the tradies side. We'll just watch this ball first. It's just drifted yeah. over onto leg there, flicked out. I think we all know the um, 
charismatic Lydon Gibbons. He's with both bat and ball. He's, he's a proven match winner, and he's done it in the past against these guys. So, and a far more mature Lydon Gibbons than we've seen in, in, in years past, mate. Do you think yes, that's part of the been. transition to Runaway Bay Cricket Club? Uh, well, that's part of the part of the transition. He's now captain of the club here, having moved here to Runaway Bay. It's also it. his, uh, you know, domesticated life these days, oh, yes. living with his lovely girlfriend. So, yeah. that certainly probably would have helped his cricket. Does seem to have helped his physique slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but then Travis Harker, his bowling is just different to everyone else today. The slow spin bowling, yep. he knows this wicket like back of his hand. They'll use him bowling in, well, the wind conditions. Yep. He'll know exactly what he wants to do. And they'll just have to manufacture the power. If they're chasing any kind of big score, I think he's, uh, he's uh, going to have a huge role in the second innings of this game. Going at almost eights, I think you know we are tracking towards that 160, and I think it's important that at the turn they've got wickets in hand. Um, if one of these guys can um, can get a 50 in the bank, and we've got uh, Dane on 32 off 21, so if, if Dane could, you know, in the next sort of few overs, sort of bang up that 50, I think that puts them in the driver's seat to have blokes like Lydon come in um, with a little bit of uh, abandon and uh, and go after the bowling. Absolutely, and Jordan Renault is an aggressive player as well. It's 32, it's a great start already for the tradies with the opener getting 32, and, and you're quite right, that's just going to alleviate all sorts of pressure off Leiden and the rest of the batting lineup. So Nick O'Connell coming on to bowl now, Rob. What, uh, what do you know about Nick's bowling? It's a very good question, Peter. He looks like a right arm bowler. <laughs> Seems to bowl meds. <laughs> Lofted out there to uh, a whitish mid off. He's not one of the players I know so well, to be honest. Um, have you seen much of him? I've seen bits and pieces of him uh, around time. I think he's sort of uh, he's more of that sort of stock med bowler, try and uh, you know not get belted, but uh, just trying to slow the run rate down. I mean, as we know in this sort of format, Rob, you know, if you've got a bowler that could only go for 15 or 20 off his four overs without taking wickets, you take that, you know, most days of the week. Oh, absolutely. I'll take that once in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So Marty Anderson has finished his four over spell oh. last over. Oh, there's that spot outside off stump that I was talking about earlier, Rob. There's just the batsmen not moving their feet and it just staying a little bit lower. You know, I think we'll see a few snicked off there today. So it's a tidy start here to Nick O'Connell's bell. Three runs off the first four deliveries. So, as I was saying, Marty Henderson now bowled out. Four overs, one for 24. So, a good start for him. Took the wicket of Reese Finn, 17 off 12 balls. He's taken a great catch from uh, Chandra Sekharam out on the boundary. So, last ball here of Nick O'Connell's first over. So if you're watching us there on the Facebook feed as well, let us know where you're watching from around the world. It's been a fantastic innovation here, this, Rob, the, being able to live stream the finals from these major competitions. Um, our reach out there in, in the world now, we've got uh, franchise, well, we've got cricket, uh, LMS cricket being played which is in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, right. England, Australia, South Africa, the United States, Singapore. Have Sorry. I missed anyone? There's a lot of countries. It's been played in 19 countries now, I think. 19 last, countries. Last man stands. Um, so, big shout out to all of you watching out there. And uh, Stephen Sheiky, I see, has just joined. It's a real shame to not have him involved here. One of the best players in Sydney, but he uh, is in the Navy, so he was called up by the Navy to go and play a tournament in Canberra this week, Pete. So, oh. really affected uh, East Exiles' chances this, this yeah. tournament, not having their. Uh, well, big, big, big shout out to all my uh, Canberra uh, teams. A little bit of rain about in Canberra today, though, as well. So, uh, unfortunately, Twilight's looking a little bit shaky tonight. No pun go. intended. Uh, be very disappointed with that fielding out on the boundary there, Nick O'Connell, and he won't be wanting to uh, catch Marty Henderson's eye after that. So, boundary down there relieves the pressure slightly. Stephen had a cameo uh, as well with the Spider Monkeys at this year's uh, Newcastle Open. And uh, met him there. Absolutely. Really good guy. Oh, inside edge again. So, Simon Melbert's watching from the Wirral in the UK. Good to good to see you. Zane Rowe Still from Itswi Ipswich. Richard Gentry from Melbourne. Nico, known for his power hitting. Zane Rowe, thank you for the information there. Ah, yes. He 
banged up big six for his first ball. Oh, that'll be close. No, going down leg side. Big appeal there <laughs> from Brody Dwyer. <laughs> Brody always disappointed when his appeals are turned down. One of, one of the umpire's perennial favourites, Brody Dwyer. <laughs> He's, uh, he's had a glittering LMS career, though, through the years. Absolutely. Being aboard to two world championships. Won two national titles, obviously, with second 11. As he said, was an uh, opening batsman for them over in England for Australia. In, uh, widish. Uh, I towed that one just out through a widish cover. We didn't see Brady bowl much for Australia over in England. He had a role more as a keeper. Yeah. But uh, last year at nationals, he was, he was on fire with both bat and ball. So, you know, he's... he's very capable with the ball, that's for sure. Well, that is straight. So, Rob, you didn't take a dedicated keeper um, for the World Series this year, and I know that there was much, much talk about that. Well, well I, I actually think that Brody did quite a good job behind the stumps, and and then they swapped to to Sam Lang, who's, to be honest, not a keeper, but he also did a fantastic job behind the stumps. Do you think that's something that you'd look at in the future, taking someone that was specifically a keeper that could maybe bat or, or bowl well, a bit? Well, I'd also potentially suggest that uh, the general. Last man stands team around Australia look at not having an English manager of the Australia team. <laughs> You're not English though, are you, mate? Oh, no, <laughs> the home country. So, yeah. no, are we, th this was a point of contention. But we figured basically that during that through the batting and all rounder rankings that one of the top keepers would be up there. Mm -hmm. And the way that it turned out and the date that we picked the rankings. Yeah the keepers weren't in there and it, as I said when I referred to Brody Kenyon before mm -hmm. he's, he's a standout keeper batsman Absolutely. in Australia so he's the kind of guy that we figured a oh, lovely shot there cut it out there just the one though nice bit of fielding down there we figured that through the um, you know nationals last year and the world championships a player like that would come through didn't actually happen but Sam Lang obviously could have taken up that role as well as yep. the keeper batsman and, and we saw his talent when he did he just um I don't know, oh, just there's a, oh, that edge oh, I was talking about, wide-ish. Just as we're talking up Brody oh. Kenyon's keeping, you know, that's why we don't pick these keepers, Pete, you know, I mean, <laughs> chances like that in an Australian uh, champ semi-final, you've, you've just got to glove them, really. Well, don't wearing you? the South African colours as well, mate, is that the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a very difficult chance there for Kenyon, but yeah, well, just like your prediction, Pete, hitting that spot outside off stump, gets the nick, and that could be a big moment in the game, so we've got Seed on strike here, he's... Hit that fine. Is it going to go all the way? I think it will. It has Beats gone the all the way. Man. So it moves Born. on to 44 now, 29. So this is turning into a crucial innings in this semi-final. Absolutely. He um, he knocks this in there, and I I say it's very much in tradies' court to post a big score here. As you say, I mean, second 11, they're not going to be scored, scared by any total that's put up on the park. They'll they'll think that they can chase anything down. So and rightfully so. Um, oh, there okay. again, bottom edge. It's that spot outside off, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, and it's on a good length. And I think it's just if you're not getting your foot across to that ball. Well, we've got to remember as well as this first 10 overs into the wind. So I think tradies you can't trust will be very happy to have only lost one wicket hitting into the wind. Shot onto the back foot. Pulled that through forward. Way too short there. And that's the last ball of the first half of the inning. So they'll switch ends now for the second 10. That moves Dane Seed, the opener, onto 48 off 31 balls. He's hit six boundaries so far. Jordan Renault down the other end, unbeaten on seven. So 73 after the first 10 overs. So that's a very solid start for me. Oh, 73. I, honestly, 73 after 10 in this format, I'm seeing 170 plus here now, Rob, um, unless they can tighten up the bowling. Um, shout out to Luke Jorgensen uh, from Canberra. Neil Smith, I can see there from Newcastle, uh, is watching. Sam Campbell, John Miller. John Miller should be up here. Why aren't you at the ground, John? Um, I see that uh, Dan Applett's watching with Peter Sharkweek Sarukas from the Gold Coast, waiting for the Big Show Gibbons to stroll out there, Rob. <laughs> big Show Gibbons, <laughs> absolutely. He's Big Show on and off the field. You hear him coming, that's for sure. Wine There's a few shout-outs here about wicket keepers. Some fantastic keepers here. Glenn Arnold, as Braden Morton says, uh, he's a top wicket keeper batsman. Keith Vogel. The amount of catches and 50s he scored in LMS is incredible. Paul Marchese. Yeah. Great bowler, great batsman. Absolutely. One of the top captains in LMS and a great keeper as well. Brady Kenyon coming in here now. Swipe across the line. That is 
gone. That is a big six <laughs> there. So Jordan Renault getting going in the first first over with the change of wind here, change of ends. Change of ends. I think that uh, maybe they've uh, been given a bit of licence here. Given one of their batsmen looks, well, I won't say guaranteed to pick up a 50, but certainly uh, in uh, is looking the goods. Uh, maybe Jordan's been given the, the right to swing. Absolutely. So a bit of pressure on Brodie Dwyer here. Yeah, oh, bold. Responds very well there. Jordan Renault looking to go big. That's a massive wicket. Bold by the Australian representative, Brody Dwyer. 13 off 10 balls. Shout out there to uh, Shafi uh, or Tanvir from London. Uh, I met Tanvir in uh, 2013, world champs there. Was uh, involved in the umpiring of that competition. He's also the uh, main umpire at the um, World Series that we had in England in August. So good to see you watching. Tanvir, the um, yeah, just to finish off that discussion about wicket keepers and yep. selection, it does show that that for the next tournament we had we had a very clear selection criteria and how the team yep. was going to get picked. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely a big argument going into the next one that you at least for one of the wild card roles put it up your sleeve to be able to pick a keeper if they're outside of the rankings. Yeah, we weren't in a position to be able to pick Paul Marchese or Keith Vogel or these other guys because they weren't in those ranking positions. So. Yeah. Hands were tied in that respect, but you know, it was the first World Series, first time we've come up with that selection criteria, so it was we'll an learn from it. It was an amazing series to watch from home, Rob, so uh, coming in now, right on over the wicket. So who do we have in now at the crease? The new batsman for tradies you can't trust is Rhys McCarthy, so replaces Jordan Renault. He's gone for 13, Jordan. so surely we'll be seeing... Uh, I reckon, I reckon this could be a batting order change, do you think? If, if there hadn't been a wicket for another two or three overs, we may have seen Lydon Gibbons coming in, but... I think so. But I think we'll probably see... Well, actually, that should there, be... Uh, that's his 50. Excellent shot Great there. Great 50 from Dane there. 52 off 30. 32. That's a oh, huge, 32. huge innings in the context. That looks like Lydon sort of uh, swaggering out, doesn't it? That looked like the Lydon swagger. Oh, that's definitely Lydon. Yeah, that's definitely Lydon there. <laughs> he's, uh... <laughs> he's a fan favourite. He's a ladies' uh, favourite. He's, he's just a just an all-round LMS legend, isn't he? He, Pete? he is, Rob. He is. He. Um, I have been laughing at him. Oh, sorry, with him since 2010, I think. So. Uh, he uh, played with a three-short contingent that went to the Worlds in 2013. Absolutely. You played at Lords with him, didn't you? Oh, I did play at Lords with him, yes. I meant to say, so did you, Rob. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> sorry, so did you, Rob. Yeah. I think, uh, Rob, you were keeping uh, to my first ball at Lords, actually. Uh, what have we got here? End of the over. End of the over, mate. Yeah, well, that, was a, that was a wicket ball, wasn't it? It was a wicket ball, Rob, actually. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. It, um, yeah, first ball at Lords, wicket. Fantastic. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think uh, one of uh, one of the great marketing shots for LMS is actually uh, Lydon uh, uh, opening up the shoulders there at that particular competition. So uh, I think he said a few times that maybe uh, he should be getting some kickback from it. But uh, I oh, think Lydon he... doesn't need the extra money, whatever he tells everyone <laughs> doesn't, else. Doesn't need the extra self promotion. So we we promoted Lydon Gibbons enough here, but we've got two new batsmen at the crease. So Reese McCarthy has only faced one ball, and Lydon Gibbons at non-striker end yet uh, just faced one ball as well. So. Two new batsmen, bit of pressure. Excellent innings from Dane Seed to get the tradies off, up and running. And here we go. So we got your uh, Tina Sean Chanda Sekaram. So tell us a bit about his bowling, Pete. Well, he was fast. <laughs> That's what I want to tell you about him. I think one of the things that I found um, uh, most difficult facing him yesterday, Rob, was that um, his hand seems to be in a different position each time he releases it. So that one, he's rolled the fingers over that. Uh, someone, uh, one of the, uh, I think uh, one of the second eleven guys was telling me post game um, that having faced him in the nets, his quicker ball, his wrist is certainly in a different position than when uh, he releases his standard ball. Um, the two short ones that I got from him though, um, they were quick, and they were right on that shoulder line. So really difficult to get into position for those for some for someone like myself. He's oh. got a hold of that. That's a beautiful shot out towards backward point. Slide. Good fielding around there in the deep. They'll come back for two. Get in there. Yeah. Slide in. in the bat there. Quality shot there from Maurice McCarthy early. 
I think the, the difference here, though, Rob, is that um, these guys, I think, playing on turf regularly, um, first-grade cricketers, not ageing uh, wannabes uh, like myself, um, they'll be able to sort of get into position nice and early over the wicket there. Oh, there you go. All the fingers over that again, right up on middle stump. I can give it's pushing it through. They've obviously shown intent here, um, the tradies. Very well. Bit of, bit of early running for Leiden out there. I saw, I saw him cracking his first beer at 7.30 <laughs> this morning, so I'm not sure how those will be going down now. Oh, that is a cracking shot there through cover. Wow. He's really showing his talent oh, out oh, there. Oh. Sec second shot this over from Reese McCarthy through the point cover region. Really gets onto it quickly. That'll build some confidence there. We certainly didn't have a lot of that from our, from our boys yesterday. Um, I'm not sure we were getting that same sort of length of delivery either from uh, Thinu, but I um, kind of think he's probably got to try and go a little bit wider of the crease here. And uh, You're right there. He has done that. Yeah. Just a single to end the over. Oh, one ball left, sorry, in the over, is it? Yeah, so he, you can see there he just sort of cramped him up and just almost off the gloves. Warren hands him his uh, his hat. So, Rob, you were talking earlier today about the uh, the experience from these umpires. Warren has uh, umpired in Newcastle on the Central Coast and has a lot of first-grade umpiring experience. Can you tell me a bit more about uh, um, our other umpire today? Yes, Rick Anthony the game. He's, uh, he's umpired uh, well over 600 games of last man stands now, I think, uh, he, from down in Sydney. He's been up here at Nationals the last... Uh, I think he's umpired the last four yep. national finals. Has that classic shot of him uh, in the Ocean's yeah. 11 versus... Uh, Great shot there, but through deep mid-wicket, so... Bruce McCarthy showing some real aggression early. As a... Uh, yeah, he's an excellent umpire. So a lot of experience out there today. It's great to see. And they're both very good umpires at interacting with the teams and the players. So. Absolutely. I think that's one of the really important things with umpires uh, in this format, just engaging with the players. Um, it's certainly one of those uh, one of those assets uh, for umpires that uh, players will actually uh, trust in their decisions and uh, the players can just get on with playing. Could see uh, Tom Downey watching. He's a... Uh, a regular here at Nationals normally. With the Colts? With the Colts indeed. Yeah. Oh, wide ball there. Oh, miss field there from, very unusual from Mr. Kenyon. They're taking full advantage of that from uh, the tradies. So picking up the extra two runs there. What number is Jared Austin batting? Wayne Grieve. Um, we'll, uh, we'll ask around. Jared is an ex tradies player. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's, he's moved to the older act team. Jordan into the offside. So I didn't see you in that older act uh, game earlier when we played them this week, Rob. Uh, were, were you scared off by the talent from uh, NCT8 or uh, just really busy with uh, organising the tournament? I was pretty busy, actually. I was, I was very keen to play you. Um, but uh, it's yeah, disappointing to not be able to see yeah, it's, uh, it's 42 teams here this year, and four-day tournament, 42 teams. Uh, it's quite a quite a busy one. Absolutely. So we have. Uh, I think that uh, you know the guys really should be putting their hands together for the work that uh, you've put in again this year, and certainly Alex Flatley, his first year uh, helping you out there this year, mate. Uh, how's he gone? Alex done very well. Great young guy. He's worked with LMS over in England and runs Tweed and Gold Coast. Excellent young guy. He's, I'm actually going on that note. I think uh, I will be handing over shortly to uh, Dane Rakowski. who can help out on the uh, stats front. No worries at all, mate. Yeah, I'm just uh, reloading my scorecard here myself. Few balls out, well outside the off stump there. Really uh, pushing the batsman to move their feet. Uh, some bottom edges there. I've in, uh, enjoyed this stint, Rob. So uh, I'll see you when you come back for your next one. I'll see you shortly. I'll just uh, go and have a quick chat with the umpire. No worries. So while Rob goes out to have a chat with the umpire, we'll run you through the scorecard. Uh, traders you can't trust currently 86 for two, um, off 11.3. 
Uh, Dane uh, Cedar, 50 off 32, he's retired. Reese Finn, uh, 17 off 12. Uh, Jordan Trigoreno, after a big bomb six, got out the next ball, 13 off 10. Currently, Reese McCarthy and Lydon Gibbons out there. Um, so, uh, Dane, welcome back here for the second time today. Might just need to turn your mic up there, mate. So I'll say that again. Uh, yeah, welcome back here for the second time today, Dave. Yeah, exciting stuff. Um, some runs on the board already. The tradies always score at good rate. Uh, Sean Thune, Thune steaming in. Went for a few last over, though. He did, and I was just saying to Rob, he's certainly bowling a um, different, uh, different spot than when he was bowling yesterday. Yesterday yeah. was all about shortening up the... Uh, shortening up our batsman. Today he's certainly uh, bowling more at the batsman. A um, couple of loose ones there. Um, Reese McCarthy played a glorious you know, square drive Beautiful off one of that. those. I kind of... Um, it's funny, it's one of the, those great shots. It's sort of like when Mark War used to play it. Um, you know, down on one knee and just you know, gliding it out through the covers. When you see a shot like that, it's always indicative of class and it sharpens your focus on that particular batsman. It's uh, <clears throat> it's incredible to see. I think you know straight away when someone hits it like that that uh, they're worthy of your attention. Absolutely. I think that one of the things here is like, it's that sort of misconception again that uh, in LMS you have to go over the boundary all the time. But the reality is, if you can play some class cricket shots, um, you're going to you know accumulate a big total and uh, make it very difficult for the opposition. Thinu coming in very again. Much so. Good bowling. Yeah. Once again, though, have a look at that. That is. Oh, that's a sensational piece of fielding out there on the, back, on the boundary. That's what you'll, uh, you'll see from both teams today. What a glorious piece of timing there by Reese McCarthy. Hitting it very well. Because that was a right up in the block hole. It just was. a squeeze. And it absolutely flew. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up in the coverage, but you watch what the tenor puts his hand in a different spot. And there he goes again. That time just darting that one into the pads. Opened the blade, pushed it out there through backward point. Lovely. A live score. Just back online now. And we're looking at 2 for 103 off 13.2. Reese McCarthy, 21 off 13, moving through the gears. Uh, Light, Light and Gibbons dragging the chain with 1 off 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and That's again. Off like a bullet. Be two down there. There. Oh, sliding down, bit of a bobble. Easy through for the two. Does well. Oh, misfield. Burst through the hands. Uh, stays at two. Interesting little battle here. Leiden won't have too many sighters. And McCarthy playing a shot a minute here. A shot a ball, I should say. Jason Bush says, the big chief, give us some stats, Dane. Stats are, <clears throat> I'm getting slower every day at running. It's about uh, all I know at the moment. <laughs> Don't have my big database in front of me. How are you, Bushy? Hope you're well, mate. I can tell you, Dane, I have not run as much as I have run this week. <laughs> I was pegged down at third man for our games, and seriously, it was probably the most appropriate position for me, but oh, I've run more than I've run in about five years. Yeah, it's good in that respect. <laughs> So again, please share the uh, live feed with all your cricketing friends around the world. Let them know about Last Man Stands. Inside out, has that got over the boundary? That's yes, the six bits. Oh, jeez, I'm enjoying watching this guy bat. I've, I don't think I've seen him bat before, but... He's, he's certainly moving through the gears here. in the middle of that <clears throat> bat. Sean Thino, uh has held a top ten position in the all-round rankings in the world in LMS for the past several years. He's gone some journey here, though. None for 22 off just nine balls. I've got to tell you, Dane, he's not bowling the same as he was yesterday. No. And now, I mean, there's a lot of difference, obviously, between bowling on the synthetic and coming out and bowling on the turf. But this this pitch has shown something for both bat and ball. Definitely. And, and certainly down this end, there's that spot outside off stump that I, you know, that's giving something to the bowler. The other end seems to be a little bit more up and down. But I think he's got to start bowling wider of the crease, making the batsman actually move. In again. Oh, and lovely shot. Coming out. Waited on that. Coming off the blade very well. <clears throat> no ball, front foot. Wow. So that'll be a freebie. 
and a repeat. This could be the thing that gets Lido going. Wow. I know that is the if there's a end of the over. If oh, <laughs> I was, oh dear, Lido would be going, oh, what? He'd be kicking himself. He would be. So, Sean, champion that he is, known for 26 off two. Any yeah. Jason Bush, any double hat-tricks taken this week? Wow. We've had two hat-tricks, so I suppose that's a double hat-trick. I've not heard that story before, Jason. Could you, um, could you expand on it for me? So Warren O'Rourke here, uh, Central Coast of Newcastle umpire, indicating the free hit. Looks Stitched like. up for Vaughan. Now, Vaughan bowled yesterday. I have to say, Dane's the quickest I've ever faced in LMS. Really? Um, yeah. Yep. The quickest. He can bend the back, that's for sure. Absolutely. Any strides. Free hit here, remember? Oh, and that's a good free hit ball too. Yanked across. Yeah. I think that's one of the things with the free hit is, um, I, I don't know what it's like in your leagues, but I think more free hits are missed than actually taken. Absolutely. Um, because guys trying to hit the cover off the ball. Overcomplicating the issue. Speaking of which, I did actually hit Vaughan for a pretty big six yesterday, hitting the cover <laughs> off the ball. But not that I want to talk myself up there, but... I haven't done much this week, so... Well, yeah, <laughs> got to make it count. Absolutely. Just sneak that one out into the covers there. Yeah, good bowling. I think that um, the position that they're in at the moment, Dane, is that, uh, you know, if Leiden can even just take this role at the moment while Ryan is swinging freely, just tick that strike over. It really is going to give him that opportunity to open his shoulders a little bit and we'll see more of some of that Leiden flair that we've seen in, in past years. Well, that's right. Yeah. Holding, <clears throat> holding a run rate above eight at the moment, and as, a, as we know, a score of 160 plus on the on the turf would be very tough, very to tough down. But I think what we're seeing here is the, the two different ends here now. Now, Dane is that um, moving wider of the crease, forcing it into that zone where the umpire's got to make a decision about a wide. I think that's really oh, oh God, hello, that is oh massive. that is massive. Oh, watch where that goes in. That could be a lost ball. Out Over past the, the memorial. Cart path there. Wow. Clean. <laughs> oh, I love cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Moves to 41 off 20 with that. That's an absolute, absolutely beautiful strike. Mick Browning, fire up Vin. I don't think that's quite as big as my six yesterday, but, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. So, Trady's moving well into the 120s here. One ball shy of 15 gone. Listen, I think the big thing that what you could say here, though, if there was another side out here looking down the barrel of potentially a 160 or a 170, Dane, you'd be going, maybe the game's gone. Yeah. Um, I, I personally think that having watched what was second 11 over a number of years, these guys could put 220 on and, and, and these guys would think that they were still a chance. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, well, not just think, they would believe that they were absolutely a chance of chasing that down. So I think... Whatever totals posted here, we're going to see a classic um, LMS semi-final. So, I mean, finals days here have turned out some some unbelievable, um, really close matches. So um, I agree, absolutely, Pete. Marty Henderson will back his boys to the hill. Absolutely, and uh, they've uh, earned that <clears throat> by simply winning games that other teams wouldn't. But the trade is doing very well here. 15 gone, 124 on the board, two down, one in the sheds. Pretty well set for uh, an explosive final five. So what do you think, what are you looking at then, Dane? What do you think? Well, we're looking 8.27 here. I'd say 175 plus at this rate, wow. which uh, you'd have to say. What's the top score been here, do you know, um, on the turf this week? I don't know on this week. I know that um, second, oh, that's, oh, out that's a miss man. hit. That Down to the goat, that's Ooh, one four bounce rounds. Didn't quite get it, but... Uh, I mean, by Lido's standard, that is to say, but uh, pretty clean. This field. So 273 on this field. Oh, no, up the hill. No, no, uh, 274 from three short, I think, uh, earlier in the week, up, up on one of the synthetic I know decks. That, uh, the second 11 got 169 yesterday, which is right up there hmm. uh, on this field that is to say and uh, and that was more than enough they want eked out a 46 run win uh, against a very very worthy opponent uh, you, won't, you won't see too many scores the plus side of 150 on this field I think the groundskeeper here really needs to be applauded for what he's put together um, you know to play a tournament over you know three or four days when these sort of wickets are really only getting 
one or two days at a time into them. Absolutely. Um, it, it's a fantastic effort to see them just bring the, such a fantastic pitch up. Alex, I was speaking with Alex before, the, the local manager of Gold Coast, and uh, they, they really do. They deserve every accolade they're given the ground staff because, well, and in again, contact. I think they'll have to settle for one, though. I will. Cameron Ingle, blowing a tight line there. Ground staff have done a wonderful job, as usual. Uh, the pitch is now technically a fourth dayer. Yeah, and there's still plenty in it for both bat and ball, and so that's what you want. Really important for Reese here to to get his 50. I think it'd be a waste yep. of an innings to uh, to get out before Has that. Has to now. go into the sheds now. Oh, that's see, oh, go. oh, no, that he won't drop this. No, he won't. Oh, oh he did everything he could to do so. <laughs> that was the commentator's curse at work. There, that was. Good old Marty. Wow. Takes it on the second grab, but uh, he'll tell you he did that on purpose. Just yes. To... Sorry, Reese. That's probably uh, my wicket, mate. Yeah, you've done him there. Yeah. Uh, fantastic innings, though. 41 off 22. I mean, two fours, two sixes. Certainly an entertaining inning, innings. Um, can hit a ball. Uh, lovely to watch. An important wicket, that. Um, because now Lido, eight off six with an, a, a reasonable boundary. But another new batsman in. And only one in the sheds means that uh, the trade is if they do chance their arm, it's a risk that they're not as insured for yeah. as if Reese did retire and got into the sheds. It's essentially two free wickets there. Absolutely. 41 runs there, 22 balls, two fours and two sixes. Indeed. I love yeah. it. So 132, that, you know, they're still moving, but uh, that's an important wicket. Jeremy Jezza Warren here coming out to, to bat. I've not seen Jeremy explode before um, in... Uh, in this format, but uh, I'm happy to be corrected by anyone that's seen Jez bat a lot. I would have thought here the idea is for him to get Lydon on strike and then for them to yep. to open up. Boundaries or singles, I reckon, is the order of the day. Um, especially with Man Mountain, Dane uh, retired 50 of 32, seeing him like a beach ball. Gibbo, uh, Gibbo is one of the cleanest strikers I've seen in this game from Adam Hyman. He certainly is. Oh, well, okay. That's clean. <laughs> it's like, okay. And that's, that's probably a signal of intent there. That's the way it is. Another one of the Kiwi contingent here at uh, Runaway Bay. <laughs> Wayne Grieve sorry, showing us uh, the partnership worth 43, and Lydon Gibbons only has two. <laughs> We're amazed as, as you are, Wayne. Um, yeah, that's got to be rare. <laughs> Good chat from Wayne there. Oh, oh that's reaches well. for it. Yep. Out Just to the man, though. They're not going to run on... Uh, Tino picks that up. Tino's arm. Decent over from Engel, but they still managed to, to keep the runs ticking. And uh, they did get a steal on that dismissal, so good match awareness there from Lido. So the end of the 16th, 3 for 1, 3, 7. 20 balls left in the bank. You'd say they'd be aiming for 40, which would put them to 177, which would be a very good total, if oh, not a, a match-winning one. Absolutely, a hard total to chase, I think that would be. Hi to Dave Hancock there from uh, watching, uh, from, from Newcastle. Dave would have been one of the bowlers you would have liked to see as well. Unfortunately, uh, side strain um, pull, made him that he had to pull out from the NCT8 side. A real um, shame. He uh, has come over recently from South Africa, working in Newcastle now. Not oh, too hot. Chaffet swinging. Nice breeze here, mate, so not too hot at all. Swung away down there. One bounce to the fielder. They'll be going for everything now, I'd have thought. So what would you be doing in this situation then, mate, just to try and sort of reduce that run rate? I mean, they've obviously gone back to Vaughan. There's pace in there. But from my point of view, pace means more runs. If, if they Well, can... absolutely. The outfield being what it is. Some innovation there from Lido. <laughs> Got Vaughan pretty excited. Um, oh. Is there someone in the side that could sl take the pace off? Well, not at second level. Uh, they don't seem to have many mediums or spinners, um, and it doesn't seem to affect them too well, given the, their track record for winning. But maybe someone that can take the pace a little bit might be key. Lido swings it away. That'll be one or two bounces out to, to uh, the man at mid wicket. I'd say full and straight outside off. You don't want to open up that cow with the breeze, especially with the hitting prowess. We, we can see that Jez can hit the ball. Lido definitely can. Sandy Sharma's made the call. Come on, Vaughan. Marty will lift the trophy. 
That's a big call, Sandy. We're only in the semi now, but um, they've got as much chance as tradies right now. And I mean, either of these te teams, were they to go on and lift it, would be you know, worthy, worthy champions oh, again. Absolutely. And, and they will be, of course, the first uh, the first team to have won three, if they could they could pull that off, yeah. both of which have won two Incredible. national titles. We were saying earlier, five pieces of silverware among the top four sides. <laughs> Ocean's 12 now bowing out yeah. to enjoy the men, who are coming into the tournament weren't very well known. They're the name on everyone's lips at the moment, though. Vaughan in. Oh. Dot to finish. See, that's that's our brave piece of bowling there, I think, from Vaughan. He's just been called for a wide bowling, bowling wide, and he's just got that one to tail back in. Good finish there. Jake O'Connell, Marty Henderson bowls medium pace. <laughs> <laughs> Good shout. I think you're supposed to put a smiley face with that, Jake. Um, oh, dear. Okay, come, on, so come on, Vinny from Jason Hart. <coughs> Sorry, man. I think that just the three off the over, so a nice... Little mini battle there that uh, Vaughan definitely walked away victor on there. Sean back on. So just going through those bowling figures there, Marty Henderson, four overs, one for 24. Vaughan Oldham, two overs, none for 18. Corey Marshall, two overs, none for 18. Nick O'Connell, two overs, none for 14. Brady O'Dwyer, two overs, one for 15. Thinu, Chandra Sakharin, two overs, none for 25. That's when they threw for an easy two. And Cameron Ingle, two overs, one for 21. So yeah, they're sticking with Sean. I suppose a couple of overs that weren't to his usual standard don't unravel him that easily. He'll, he'll be up to the challenge, I reckon. Oh, that's too that's wide. Too wide there. Curse on him there. Well left by Lido. Well, I think if you look at, um, you know, Adil's bowling the other day is that... Uh, I think it might have been your write-up where he went for 19 off his first over and then came back with three for 26 or something Can off be, four. Yeah. Can be done. He's an absolute class act. Absolutely. Scared people all tournament with some absolute gas. But, uh, yeah, he brought it right back three for seven off his next three. The new in, that's Straight up. down the ground. That's going to be it's a catch right for all the us. commentators. That will clear the field. That's all the way for six. That is a clean hit. That's a great shot down the ground. Lydon Givens, that's what we've come to expect. Probably hasn't hit that as cleanly as what he would have liked. No, not quite, not, nor his boundary, but he's 18 off 11 and he's moving now, that's for sure. Does have the run at 149, two and a half to go to his mate. We, we could be looking at a 180 plus even at this point. Yeah, if he gets going here. Yeah. Oh. Round the corner, that'll be four. That'll be you four bits. Say, cleanly yeah. hit. Did well enough. These uh, tradie boys, they know the ground well. And uh, that's clever batting. Thinu now 39 off 2.3. He will not be happy with that. He's a world class, top bloke Absolutely as well. Absolutely is. I had my photo taken with him this morning, and uh, you know, he uh, definitely uh, the, the, the fire of the demon when bowling, but certainly the, the heart of a legend. Pardon me. Oh, pardon. Apologies. The heart of a legend when, um, when uh, off the field. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Good well played. Yeah. Lido, they'll come back, I reckon. Oh, no one at the Stumps. Wrong end. Yeah, well run. Yeah. Again, hello to everyone that's following this uh, yeah. intriguing Wonderful to Last see. Man Stands final series from around the world. Going to see a great chase, I think. Yes, yeah, streaming through the Facebook page. Um, if you're on there, please uh, share it to all your friends. Let them know about this fantastic game of Last Man Stands. Oh, straight that's down the ground. Up. That'll be... Oh, that's a fantastic effort there from Thinu, but... Yeah. Just out of the clutches there. So two more. David Dalton do Ipswich Proud Boys. Well, they certainly are. Every time they front out. So 10 balls left, two overs left, 156 on the board, three down, one in the shed. It's, uh, you'd have to say they'd be going for 20 plus off the next two, which would put them right into the mid 170s. It's getting toward the point of a very spiky chase where second 11 are going to have to do everything right in order to gun that down. So Va Vaughan has gone, he's got... He's 21 off three. 
That's quite quick. Oh, yeah. clever. That's clever. That's clever batting from Leiden. It's four behind. I, I really think for Vaughan, he, he knows that Leiden's going to be on the move to him. He really has to look at taking a little bit off, I think, pushing him wider, making that shot or taking that shot yeah, out of play, I think. To get rid of it. Yeah. Or come around the wicket, come around the wicket and then force him to make the other. But the, um, the one thing with Leiden, though, we both know he can play on both sides yeah, of the wicket. So he tends to play 360. Yep. He's got plenty of innovation and plenty of power. They've moved that man finer now. Absolutely, Steve. I think um, Steve too is saying second... Well, he's got second nine, but second 11 um, have a long, powerful batting lineup. They absolutely do, mate. And as we've said uh, in the commentary, I mean, traders could post 220 and these guys would believe that they could chase it. And, and I would never be surprised if they did. But it's a big ask. Oh, lovely. Off the f clipped off the feet there. Should only be... Well, it'll be two. Back for sure. Yeah. Gaz final is at 2 p.m. Simon Melbers, welcome back again. I know that you've been in and out of uh, watching the commentary, uh, watching the vision this week. Does great work uh, all over the world for, for Last Man Stands. Two to come in this over. One, six, two on the board. Good. Oh, he's got oh, that. Oh, that's, that's out. One knee. <laughs> he's, the miss picket fence. he's miss hit it again for six. <laughs> oh, dear. Very clean hit. Big shout out to all the franchise holders that uh, came up this week as well. There's uh, a lot of people doing a lot of good work in LMS around the country. Um, I know I've seen Alex is sitting to my left and, and we've got the great Andy Levitt over my shoulder. Um, myself, of course, Dane and Cody's here. Uh, we've seen Trent Thompson from the Central Coast, Phil Callahan from Melbourne. Uh, that's going down leg side. Oh, is that a stitch up run out though? Stitched him. Oh, oh, didn't take it. Didn't take it. Game within a game. Wow. That says a lot, I think. Um, I don't think... I, who else have I missed there? Obviously, Rob and Andrew from Sydney. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's plenty of us here. It's been it's wonderful. Been, yes. Great okay. teams. Oh, so the boys from Geelong. Yes. One to go. One, six, nine on the board. So, pending some kind of anomaly, they'll definitely move into the 170s at the very least. You flagged 180 as a potential quite a while ago. I think they'll possibly get there now. Thinu on. 42 from his three. Very atypical for, from him. But knowing the class of the man, he could well square it all up with a belter of a final over. Lido. 37 off 19, though. He will be looking to do as much damage as possible. Round the corner. Oh, he's given it. Oh, out. <laughs> Fiery stuff. <laughs> That's, I think... <clears throat> I think that's a little bit more at the fact that he doesn't feel like he's uh, bowled as well as he could have. Um, but that <laughs> Passionate stuff. Um, Absolutely. Excellent. Well, it's beyond a cameo. 37 off 20 from Lido. Absolutely. Strike rate 185. Hit three boundaries and two sixes in that. Uh, Sean, <clears throat> full and straight. Uh, Lido had used that shot to great effect throughout his innings. But uh, that one he just didn't get. And... Uh, on he goes. But job done, you'd have to say, with regard to that innings. Four balls left. Outstrides Ronnie Corbett. Chris Corbett, of course. Chris Ronnie Corbett. And Sean. One for 42 of 3.1 now. A little less intensive. Marty, you can probably hear there. Has been unusually quiet um, in the field today. Yeah, four days of running the riot, old Marty. I think he's just stealing his focus. So Sean will barrel in once again. Four balls left in this innings, 169 on the board. It's outside off, dots him up. Tough to come out at this juncture and swing heartily and make something. Four balls. Could you have placed the commentator curse on yourself, mate? Maybe they won't slip into the 170s. Wicket, wicket maiden to finish? What do you think? Could well happen now. He's looking good. <laughs> Dot again. I love it. This is the stuff he was bowling uh, yesterday on the turf and he ended up man of the match. Absolutely. And this is exactly what we're calling for before. Push it as wide as you can. Make the umpire make the decision on those yeah. whites. You know? Bowling that uh, famous line. Stuart Broad used to ping it all the time. Benny Lachlan. Also aims for it in the T20 stuff. Very good again. 
Cleaned. Clean bowled. And goodness me. There's Double one, wicket maiden. One ball left. Not a single run. And uh, Sean Thinu, we did mark that he is of high quality. Went for plenty of runs in his first three. Two for none off four balls this over. Local legend Travi Harker strides to the crease. An incredible finger spinner. And, uh, well, his, as uh, A. Flatley has just mentioned, Travi Harker did the near on impossible in the pool games. Faced one ball, hit a homer, finished with 12 not out of one, 1,200 strike rate. As a statsman myself, that, uh, that's the dream. How many home runs hit this tournament, Dane, do you know? I couldn't tell you. I know that uh, there's been one guy hit two in two games. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> You're lucky to hit one in your entire career. Absolutely. Uh, if you're anywhere near my standard. Sean finishes. Oh, that's good. Sprays. Right. Was, would have been close to a no it's ball, wide. too, I would have thought. Travis waste. Oh, yep. I think that... Uh, have we seen... Shrikant. Was Shrikant saying that was... Uh, maybe was it too wide? Travi saying that he yep. feels it Hang was on. up around think... the armpit. Oh. What are they going to do here? Hang on. Shrikant's actually... Warren... Yeah, I think, I think, oh, no, no that's oh, a go, wow. one to come, gets it right again, oh. dot to finish, yes, that's a fantastic finish, to very good, a total of 170 on the dot, 171 to win, can't help but feel that uh, despite the, the very good total, that's one more than second 11 managed themselves in a 46 run win. That they'll take some momentum in with Sean's final over taking two for one. Well, I think when we were looking down the barrel of 180, um, I, I think there would have been a few heads dropping in the second 11 lineup. And they're not one for that. They're, 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 no, they're a very uh, confident and exuberant team. I think, though, that uh, that last over has really um, you know, leveled that playing field. And I think that uh, the boys will come out. There'll be a lot of positive batting early doors. Um, oh, definitely. I think Rob said earlier today that uh, he believes that one of the, the key players in this game will be Travis Harker, and I think he, again, Absolutely. he knows how to, to, to spin his magic on, on these decks. Um, I think that uh, if, if he can bowl um, those four overs, I think one, one bowler tying down an end really makes it hard for you then to try and chase runs off 16 overs. Absolutely. Yeah. He's been doing it for years, Trav. Um, myself and my brother Cody rate him as one of the best LMS spinners we've ever seen. Yeah. We've seen a lot of games, as, as you would have as well. Mm. He just has it on, on a string at all times. Always seems to pick up at least one wicket. Rarely goes for more than 20 off his four. And when you put the combination of those things together... Uh, against a chase of 171, if he can go dark and get one for 18 or four or something, mm. then that leaves a lot to do from the other 16 overs. Even a side as good as second 11 would uh, would struggle to ping around nine and a half and over from the other bowlers if Trav can get going. Absolutely, but I, I mean, we just can't say it enough though. I mean, if there's going to be any team in this competition that's going to chase this down, it's going to be second 11. Oh, definitely. You know, um, uh, Ahead of the beginning of today's play, they were my pick uh, for lifting the silverware. Um, I, I still stand by that, though the tradies have given themselves every possible chance there. Mine was a head and heart choice, mate. My head said seconds, my heart says tradies. Um, so we'll probably take, why don't I go with tradies and we'll see how, uh, how that pans out. No worries. I'm, I'm happy to put a bottle of water on that uh, as, as the bet if you like. Maybe a schnitzel burger. Oh, a schnitzel burger, yes. Let's A1, one of Rebecca's fantastic schnitzel burgers. Can't get enough of them. I oh, think. absolutely. Uh, they'll lose a lot of business today with Cody going home early. He has an exam tomorrow, and there's, there goes about four <laughs> or five schnitty burgers. Oh, but we'll do what we can. So, so in uh, Last Man Stands, you've been, been around Last Man Stands for quite a while now. What's your favourite uh, part of the game, mate? What do you think? Well, I like battles within battles. So yep. you get... Uh, well, it doesn't even have to be the, the cream of each team. Yep. I, I like seeing a batsman and bowler that are equally matched. 
squaring off against one another. Obviously, they're both playing for the team's sake. Mm -hmm. But I like to see when there's a glint in each other's eye, in each of their eyes, yeah. and they understand that they're in a, a battle within the war, and seeing who can win those little moments, which mm -hmm. often add up to much bigger implications for the overall result of a game. Yeah. So, for example, Marty Henderson today going one for 24 or four in a in an innings where the average run rate was 8.55. That's a battle within a battle. Um, that little final moment there, Sean Thinu two for one off, two for two, sorry, off the last over after going for 14 and over. Those little moments are always the most exciting to me because they often pave the way for the end result of a match. And yeah. We'll see plenty more of those as this innings and then indeed the final go ahead. I think the thing for me that still stands and, and why in 2010, and I, I came up here for those first Worlds in 2010 and, and it was by chance. Sam Lang had said to me, um, we've got an injury, are you interested? Nice. I was on holidays at the time, came up. The next day uh, I was speaking to Rob and say, or rang my wife and said, you know, I've got to get involved in this. And then the key for me was that there were guys out there that were first graders playing with their mates who are fifth graders. Exactly. Yeah, and those fifth graders were having an influence on the game. You know, and, and that and I think this still stands. I mean most of the guys here obviously are, are playing at that first grade level course, standard. But yeah. you look at the teams that have come through this year, you look at the smokies, my team NCT eight, we came in with no expectation. So when we made it through to the final sixteen, incredible. We were just going, How good is this? Yeah, absolutely. you know, um, you know, uh, we managed to make it through. I think we finished I think we'll finish the the tournament in fifth. I, I wouldn't have put money on, on us getting, <laughs> getting near that. You Fantastic know. Um, effort. But I think that's the sort of thing that drives this competition forward is the fact that we're bringing... There's, there's guys coming back to cricket that haven't played before and, and some of which who you know, may not have played since they were at school uh, and they're getting back and involved again. I'm hearing some really good things you know, from different people about um, the, the ladies and the girls getting involved yeah, now absolutely. as well. And, yeah. I, and I'm really looking forward to, a, to the future where we're seeing the ladies coming up for these tournaments as well and, and getting involved because I think there's those real opportunities for people to actually get engaged and enjoy their cricket. Now, you and I both love the, the longer format. Of course. Not everyone does. No. But I think I'm not one of those people that believes that this format takes away from that format. Absolutely not. I don't think they're mutually exclusive at all. I don't see T20 as evil or counterproductive to the overall health of cricket. Not at all. Um, T20 has done a lot for cricket. It's innovated a lot of players. It's uh, defined careers uh, of many more. <laughs> so Lido Lido giving there. it a bit of a dance up. The scorecard's up on uh, for that live stream. Uh, your eyes are probably a little bit better than mine, uh, mate, without my glasses on. I don't know if you can uh, tell the viewers there. There's the highlights. Yeah, very good. So we got uh, top scorer, of course, Dane, uh, 50 not out of 32. Uh, Reese McCarthy, 41 22. Wonderful. Lido, 37 20. Sean ended up with two for 44 or four after being none for 42 or three. Amazing. Uh, Broads Dwyer, one for 15 off two, chipping in as he tends to. And Cameron Ingle, one for 20 on off two. I think a bit unfair for him to be into the 20s for his two-over cameo. I think he bowled better than that, uh, but T20 is a cruel mistress at times. And here he is, the five-foot giant Travi Harker. Travi He'll start against up. Nick O'Connell. And Nick started yesterday's game with a massive six. Yeah, I don't think Travi will be as forthcoming in giving up anything like that. No. Straight onto the money, punched out into the covers for a single. Cricket's a funny old game, isn't it? I mean, you talk about, you know, fast bowlers being super tall and the like, but it's guys that are at Travis's height who aren't that tall that can really take it in at that lower angle and oh, make absolutely. it far more difficult to get, you know, underneath the ball. Absolutely. Good as it has been, this is still a fourth day wicket, so there might be some variable bounce, there might be even be some low bounce. And uh, at Trav's trajectory, that could be venomous, oh. as we see there. <laughs> Shin height. <laughs> oh. And Broads Dwyer up to the task, but not, uh, you know, he's an Aussie rep. Not everyone would have been there. Trav again. Pings at eight. Oh, that's outside. I think he's clean bowled it. Has he? And, uh, oh, he's got through him. Oh, Trav. And there we go. Wow. Didn't get up a hell of a, a lot, but um, that's to be all. known, uh, as we saw the previous ball. And through to take off stump. Broads out sweeping. A slight shrug of the shoulders. I think uh, he realises what has happened there. But um, 
Plenty of fire still in the tank. Four, second Here's the 11. replay. Oh, no. I might be a little bit behind there. But uh, I... Uh, well, that's taken me completely by surprise. <laughs> well, he's off, off again. Uh, we, we were just talking about Travi Harker. There's his... There's his one wicket. Yeah. Uh, the way he's, with the way they've come out the first three balls, won't be the only one he takes. <laughs> you can probably hear Lydon Gibbons belting out the notes uh, through the mics. I think he needs more of a mullet to be able to take this song on properly, though. <laughs> um, He'd look good in a mullet. He would. So I was going to ask you, though, before that wicket fell, um, what do you think of the decision to uh, bowl with the batsman getting the breeze for the first ten? Well, I I've heard a lot spoken about the breeze and it definitely is a factor uh, throughout the tournament no matter which of the six grounds you play on now there's two different theories one is to let them hit it against the wind for the first 10 to make it as hard as possible to get a start and then by the time they switch ends it's already gone yeah as Trav in for his fourth Punched away, no real middle on it, but uh, easy single. Again, really low down. But I think this philosophy is there's so many runs on the board. Let's give them every chance early on. Let them take some risks, maybe lose a wicket or two, and they've already lost one. And then at 10 overs, even if they're only, even if they're on rate, it gets harder and harder as they're into the wind now. Absolutely. Left, left round, round the wicket. Trav, round the wicket. Oh, roll the fingers over that wide ball though. S spits it down leg. Yeah. It's interesting, from the, you won't be able to see it on the coverage, and certainly we're lower down here, but you can, there's certainly some movement in the trees behind that side screen there, um, high up. Um, lower to the ground here, it's just a gentle breeze coming through. Oh, loving Bowling. that. Nice and, and touched tight. away. Nick showing that he's got more than just that power game. That's right, and um, it's going to, you know, you're going to need all the shots against Trav. You're going to need a lot of willpower. He's an absolute god of just just luring you into some false stroke play. And that's the first over burned, one for four. And therefore the required rate jumps from 8.5 to 8.8 .8 already. I think that um, if tradies can keep that even, I'm going to go out and on a limb and say even keep it to below 11 um, with, with you know, eight, even eight to go. Um, I think that there are real chances still chasing this down. Um, well, of course, as we know, uh, second 11, bat deep, never give up. So they have plenty of experience and ability. It's funny to say that, though, because most times you would look at those numbers and just go, well, <laughs> this one's over, let's move on to the next. Absolutely. Dane in again. Oh, straight down the ground. Powerful action. He's not bending the back, which I've heard is, is a strat for some of the faster and bigger bowlers. Just to hold it back a little bit and let the variable bounce and, uh, you know, the, the fourth dayness of the wicket offer a little bit of variety and keep the batsman guessing. Rawbone pace can go the journey on this deck. Oh, is across. Wow. I, Close to an edge. Yeah, I thought I heard one there as well. Very compact action. Um, it is. Oh, sorry, batting stance from Vaughan. It is um, indeed. A bit too close for cutters, though, I thought. Yeah, that was quite close to the body there. But uh, he certainly knows what he's doing. Dane in again. Oh, no, no doubt about that. That's steepling in, isn't it? Oh, wow. Looks like with with Vaughan being left-handed, looks like he's just trying to push across, land it on leg, maybe middle and leg, and just just gently roll it across Vaughan's stance, looking for an edge or possibly even an LB. And again. Oh, gone. Leg stump, oh, is it, or middle? Oh, oh, wow. Some fire. Oh, a little bit of uh, little bit of chat between both the teams. I think these are the most vocal of the four teams that made the uh, semis. All in good fun, but uh, there's plenty to play for. Absolutely. You're not... And that's uh, the end of Dane's first over, so one for one off that. Brilliant. Well, you can't say... I mean... Let's be upfront here. I mean, there's a spot in the World Championships next year on the line here oh, today. That's right. You know, and, and I mean, that's that's a big ask. I mean, we've seen the standard rising between the Little Miss World Series through, um, you know, years of national championships here, um, through other tournaments around the world. These guys are going to play against the best of the best. You know, this is not, we're not playing for chips, you know, or, you know, here. No, um, and we're not 
you, you, you know, this, the, the stakes are high and, um, you know, you, both teams want it. And, I mean, honestly, if there's any side I'd back in from this, even the precarious nature of this spot of 2 for 5 off 2 chasing over 170 on a big turf deck, it is the second 11, but can't be denied that uh, the tradies would be ecstatic with that beginning. Now, it, I... Oh, sorry, keep going, mate. No, you're right. No, 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 go. Each of their bowlers have have seemingly executed their plans to absolute perfection. Trav wants to keep it dry and sort of prey on the insecurity of the bounce. And Dane did an excellent job there, just pushing it across Vaughan. Stabs it in. Yeah, I like, I like that targeting the pads, really forcing the, the batsman to play. And what I really like about that, and I, I don't see enough of it in this format, is the bowler actually taking the stumps at the <laughs> other end. I mean, yeah. you're talking about some of the basics of the game, but the number of times the keeper's chasing it down, there's no one there at the stumps for any possible run-out. Yeah, you're run absolutely out. right. <laughs> and I think uh, Travi would argue that uh, if he can do it, anyone can. Absolutely. Um, but uh, he's on a, on a length here, Sean Thinu, uh, a wonderful player, big presence at the crease, but he's going to have to really focus oh that's got to be close must have been bad first oh. <laughs> I think wow um, I don't think we'll see this as leg by yet must have been bat first wow and that's that uh, that's that angle and length that Travi will be looking for so I've got to say here what I think second 11 need to do um, I think it's need to reset these are they're our two openers now one of these guys has to get a 50, um, and, and that has to be uh, relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, so bank that. Um, give someone like Marty a chance to, to get in there and, uh, um, and, and then sort of swing the willow. Um, if they lose another wicket now um, with not many more runs on the board, then, you know... Things uh, might get dire from there. I, I think, think you're so. absolutely right. Um, that's oh, hit well. shot. That's out of here. That's a great shot. I love that shot. <laughs> <laughs> and Travi, oh, I think um, with the poise that he has, we'll see that as par for the course. Absolutely. Um, he's been executing perfectly, but uh, missed that one. And Sean Stroke struck. Sorry. And just a little bit off with the length. I mean, yeah, I, just slightly. I think. Uh, well, I, I'm picking, darting it back into the pads again, and, and see if he wants to go for it a, a second time. Well, that's right. Um, he's a, a very foxy character with the ball in hand. That could even have been a setup. Beautifully executed, of course. Desperately needed as well, but here he comes again to finish his second. Yeah, <laughs> pushing it further outside off, inviting the same stroke, but uh, kicking away nicely, getting a little bit of jag there. And that's three gone, two for 14. So we're looking 158 from 17. So we're already at 9.3 and over required. Listen, they chased 130 in about 10 overs off us yesterday. So They did. Uh, the they score did. is... Um, okay. And we're two for 14 off two three. For 14, there we go. Lydon Gibbons just, just coming just across. Just checking in. Lydon Gibbons, though, wearing the, the shirt that says skipper. I didn't know he was the skipper. I'm almost certain he might have burgled that. <laughs> I think if you ask him, though, he's always been the skipper. Dane in again, angling in this time to a right. Oh, Beautiful shot. shot. Yes. That's into the gap. They'll at least double that, but it might well go. Yeah, yeah that's a all great the way. shot. So great shot. a lot of poise is going to be needed here by these two. Two early wickets. Yep, that can happen in T20. Big total on the board, sure. But uh, they have to stick to their natural games. Sean's bombed one yeah. 20 metres over the fence off his second ball. Nick has hit a beautiful cover drive off his eighth. Goes again, Lido and into the business here. That's out. And he's not yep. going to drop that. That is no. beautifully taken. But I think that's disappointing. I, I was really impressed with what Nick was doing there. I think that he was really having to hold back on hitting through. And maybe, just maybe, the holding back is why he was out then and that hasn't gone over Lydon's head. Well, that's right. And I mean, gee, uh, a lot of other grounds that might have been three or four metres over, but didn't quite get it and uh, down he goes out for nine off nine moments after a beautiful shot another huge wicket uh, for tradies and uh, things are moving along nicely for them but uh, I don't foresee them getting complacent 
they'll know that uh, they're going to have to really scrap the whole way through this match Absolutely. to get the W. Absolutely. I've got to uh, just do a quick shout-out, Dane. I, I thank you for a shout-out to my uh, my little three-year-old Samuel John earlier, but um, my uh, family have moved across the ditch to New Zealand, so they're three hours ahead, and they've just finished the school run. Fletcher B just starting at Bay Nessie School just outside of Palmerston North Fantastic. this week. So hi, Fletcher B. Hi to Samuel, my little three-year-old, now 11-month-old Spencer. Goodness me. And, Moving. of course, to their mum, Nicole, who, without whose uh, amazing abilities. I certainly wouldn't be here um, doing this commentary with you this week. So uh, big thanks to the Bowman clan. Wonderful um, stuff. I'll be home soon. Dane coming in again. Oh, oh. that is a lovely delivery. Wow. Well, arrowing it in nicely. Jake O'Connell throwing some good chat. Probably a good thing for second 11 that the openers are out. Well, the third one down. <laughs> All in good fun, I'm sure. A wonderful young cricketer he is. <laughs> oh dear. Jakey, uh, what an amazing series he had over the World Incredible. Series. Um, I think uh, probably the pick of the Oz team, and that's saying something, Sammy Lang was clutch throughout. Marty Henderson gave it his absolute all. Dane in to finish. No, sorry, he's got two left in his second. As Hayden Page would want me to remind everyone, he has Shiv in his pocket. Um, uh, yeah, incredible. <laughs> that is some scalp. One of the things I would say about that World Series team, mate, you've got all of those members coming from, from teams whose supporters are so rampantly passionate about them, passionate about their own teams, like the Lobsters and the Second Elevens and, and the Spiders and oh, Inside Edge. Goat squeezes out to square. He'll be back. No, he won't. And that's possibly just a little concession there from Marty that things are tighter than he would have anticipated. But that, that World Series side, they just gelled. They really just gelled and did they some did amazing, things, amazing things over there. But I think, um, you know, if second wanted anyone on the crease right now, it's Marty. It is. You know, He'll stay busy. Yep. He will not take a backward step. And uh, Sean, he knows very well that uh, he's got the, the ability. So I think these two are probably the right men for this cause. However... 3 for 21 or 4, all credit to tradies. They've been wonderful. They've executed their plans perfectly. Jason Bush um, has taken some time out from talking about his um, uh, double hat-trick um, to let us know that he thinks the GOAT's got it. Um, Ipswich's best cricketer since Andy Levitt. <laughs> One wonders what sort of transaction went on for that uh, to come out. No, Lovely indeed. There. Marty, fantastic. Lovely footwork. Pushes it out. One, loving the fact that they're straight through for two. Oh, there's overthrows there. Very wide throw. That's lazy, I think, there from... Uh, and they might even go back for four. Yeah. Oh, yes, they have. This is fantastic running. So these are That's the little awesome. moments once again. So suddenly, Marty's five off three. They've had an all-run four. There'll be some discontent for the bowler. His very first ball should have been one or maybe two. Suddenly, he's none for four off one. Oh, there's Kept a little low. There. Yep, there's that area again. Yeah. Get, get wide. Um, and uh, as a fourth day wicket, that's just par for the course. But uh, good area that. So good James, ball, good shot. James Edward Kane. They're uh, coming in and watching the live coverage there. I don't know how many hundreds have been scored at a national championships, but I watched the no, tail end of James's um, innings over at uh, Labrador the other day, and it was some of the best clean hitting I've seen. Stunning um, stuff against oh, a worthy opponent, too. Absolutely. Well, that's and big. And that's that'll gone. go all the way with yep. the wind. That'll go all the way. Lido, dramatic, but uh, that was always there. over. Absolutely. One of the things I thought about, though, was that um, Mitch Volta was the, uh, the bowler, uh, the bowled the last over in that match, and he's one of the best death bowlers we've seen in Canberra. I mean, he's one of those bowlers I've talked about before, short in stature, quicker ball, bowls a submarine ball regularly. Um, ridiculous. I right don't over again. Oh, close that's to the pads. Clean. Flipped. Oh, that is gone. Oh, that's a great catch. Travi Harker. <laughs> wow. That would have made it for six. Oh, my goodness. Ice cold under pressure. That would have been 20 off six for Sean had that have gone. He's out for 14. Now, listen, it's early doors, Dane. Right? Mm. It's early doors. Wickets are falling. Yeah. Four for 32 or five. If there's a last man stand situation here with plenty of overs to go, who do you want in that position? Goodness me. Well, 
with the way that Marty runs around, he could do a lot worse than that. He can hit a ball too, let's be honest. Uh, Broads Kenyon, definite hitter, can Absolutely. hit, but uh, as we saw yesterday, 45 or 41, just anchored uh, their boys to 169. A much needed innings after a couple of early ones. Honestly, I don't know. I, I think with the way that the second 11 have structured their side, there's plenty of depth still. However, honestly, 4 for 32. If not dire, it's bad. 140 off 75. Yeah, that's the part. Mm. Were they chasing 130? It'd be a much... Well, obviously, it'd be a different story, but... Um, Plenty of cricket left, but trade is well on top at the moment. Dane in, arrowing in. Oh, chasing it outside. I've been impressed with the big guy's bowling. Very I good. I think you're right. I think he's not bending the back. No. Um, and I think that's, that's really making it difficult. It is. Two for seven off 2.1 to go along with his 50 not out off 32. He's having, he's having a match to savour. Lovely shot there. That's what Marty tried to execute the ball before. I think what we'll see from uh, Marty is busy, busy, busy. Yep. He'll want to burn the next five overs with few dots, maybe the odd boundary, try and push themselves somewhere near 70, 75 off 10 with no more wickets down, minimal risk, and then reassess after that. Uh, look, there's some class still in the sheds and, and Brody Kenyon narrowly missed out on Oz selection so we're far from absolutely dire no, and Brody is someone I do like to watch bat or classy stuff yeah, absolutely both Brodies are very nice to watch good running from uh, Marty or oh, a direct oh, hit oh dear not out not out though <laughs> any direct hit in LMS is worthy of a massive shout absolutely because they happen about once a year <laughs> oh dear that might just be in the games that you and I are playing, mate. <laughs> I think you're right. I think oh, you're right. Dear. Okay, so... Sort of well, Wayne, it, you say it's the Brody that should have played for Australia. We, he was injured, so he wasn't available for selection, so that's a bit harsh, I think. I, um, I think that all of those players did fantastically well for yeah, Australia. Absolutely. Oh, I've paddled round the corner four for four, a much-needed boundary. Look, with Dane's figures now, even 2 for 14 off 2.4, he's barely going run a ball they can't let too many of the tradies bowlers burn their four overs for 20 or less yeah. not when they're chasing such a lofty total because we're talking about second 11's depth a lot tradies have plenty of bowling depth absolutely and uh, the more people that are going five and over the more that are going to have to go 10 plus and there's not a lot of hacks around good ball oh, jammed in lovely Broads onto it takes the pace off it Travi yeah. Doing his best, but uh, well run. We're, we're looking at two two men who've played a lot of cricket together, and uh, they know each other's games and also the situation very well. Absolutely, we're starting to see some of the more of the teams filter in around the ground here. Uh, yeah, we are indeed under the trees over in the background, seeking the solace of the shade. And uh, I think that uh, come finals time, we'll see quite a contingent here. I'd have um, thought so. Stretching all the way around to the other side screen, everyone. <laughs> Finding a nice shady spot. <laughs> touched a nerve, Wayne. No, no, mate, I'm from Canberra. <laughs> no nerves touched here. Oh, dear. But um, anyway, the, um, the, uh, the game in front of us, uh, we've got Travis Harker coming back on to bowl again. He yeah. straightened the run-up up here around the wicket. Sure he was has. coming through the gate before. Oh, lovely again. Well played. No, he won't get to. He's hit it too well. Oh, I might you want to put the pressure on him. <laughs> he did. So 130 runs required. 69 balls. Travi Harker into his third. One for 13 off 2.1. This is exactly what we said he'll be trying to do. Keeping it dry, taking an early one, and keeping them guessing. He won't go, go for many boundaries, I wouldn't have thought. So if you're following this live feed, uh, don't forget that... Uh, you could have uh, on one of your multiple devices out there the live score going right next to it. Lastmanstands.com forward slash live dash scores and you can pick up the game there. A couple of other games going on in the background as well that we'll try and get you um, some updates on for the plate finals. Big appeal. Going down leg though. 
<laughs> Ambitious appeal, I think. <laughs> and uh, a few questions coming in about the final. We're looking at a 2 p.m. kickoff for that, fellas and ladies. Trav Bischoff joined the coverage watching. An excellent bowler, formerly of the Woodies, now of the in and out. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe young Brody uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hit the wrong middle stump there, I think. I think that could be the case, just counting them. <laughs> you, can't, you can't jog those off, I think, anyone who is. Travi Harker will be pleased. Yes. And he comes again. Oh, it's wider outside. I, I wider really outside. like that, yeah. Gave it a little more air as well. Yeah. So buys called. A rare miss by George. Yeah. And uh, Marty, 8 off 8 with a boundary. Broads Canyon, that is, 8 off 6 with a boundary. Would that be a fedora that he's wearing? Um, or is that not a fedora? That's more of a uh, <laughs> keeping. What an unusual sight. Anyone who's seen me in the last few years knows I've done away with style mags <laughs> long ago. But it looks, it's starting to look very fedora-ish. <laughs> And that is over. Trav Burns, another one. One for 14 off three for him. That is seven gone. Four for 44 on the board. Current run rate is 6.3. Needing now 9.85. Once it ticks over that 10, it's two a ball. I'm still sticking with, mate. Anything up to 11? I'm with yep. seven to go. I'm still giving them the, the red-hot chance to, have uh, marked that. to chase it down. I'd say Marty and Brody will have agreed... Let's just get through to the halfway mark. We'll be against the wind then, but... Well, here's the real key for that, though, isn't it? If the, yeah, both these guys get 50... Um, oh, God, that's, that's a gone. big hit. That's, that's a lovely hit from the goat. <laughs> Over the pickets. <laughs> oh, love it. Love it. <laughs> Lido. Uh -huh. Lido well, doesn't fancy his chances of jumping the fence. I'm right with you there on that one, mate. I safety first, Lido, and that's exactly right going to need you if you'd knock this one over. So what I was saying there is that e even if these guys both get 50s, which they're both going to need to, to do, um, yeah. to put them in the right position, then the tactic becomes from tradies is what don't take the wickets. Absolutely. And game just within a game. Absolutely. Another little scenario. So Reese Finn was dragged after his first. He had one for 11. A bit of a highlights reel his entire first over. C comes back. Smacked for a big one by the the goat who moves to 15 off 10 brings the 50 up and that rate required just eases now from 9.8 to 9.5 those little fractions do matter and he comes again Marty rolls the fingers yeah, over he, he, Marty knows how to pace in innings they'll be coming back he's probably one man that won't get carried away he'll hit a, a bomb where needed and where able so given the, given the magnitude of this game, how much energy do you think both of these sides are expending well, in exactly. this as, as the final? And, and, and enjoyment would be... Sorry, enjoyment. Enjoy the ment. Um, um, oh, and again, again, he's gone again. It's great batting. Yeah, lovely batting. Lovely. Very compact, through the line. Um, you have to then wonder how much uh, is still left in the tank then um, well, absolutely. to take on that final. We're looking at... Uh, it's five minutes to one here and there's still a good 12 overs to play 12.2 and uh, yeah I mean both sides are going to be going at top gear so they'll be burning some calories and stretching their muscles it, it, it will be a factor that's for sure enjoy the men have had the opportunity to relax but uh, You'd hope that, conversely, they'll carry through the momentum of just having one. Maybe that'll see him through. Late cut. It's wide of the man. Marty says no to a second, though. Probably the right move, given the arm. But a good, cut, a good little passage of play here. Marty's really going now. 24 off 13. And uh, the required rate now under 9.3. A little bit of wind creeping up ball that one fumbles ever so slightly but uh, that will enable a quick single to finish so really runs off there. every ball there yep. yeah Marty is that uh, Marty calling for a drink or something I think yeah. maybe well earned they've been running 
running rampantly, and they need to. Every run is precious here for, for both sides. 112 now needed, 12 overs to go. The current run rate up to 7.5. That was a big over that. Um, 16 runs from it. And uh, Travi Harker, his last. They, there'll be not many in the second 11 side. Sad to see the back of him. One for 14 off three. Just typical Travi stuff. One of the best spinners in uh, LMS Australia, I would happily say. I'd back that. Good ball on the spot again. Full Bro face. Just pushing into cover. I think they had a brief moment where they thought about a second, but thought better of it, and rightly so. Fielder moved in nicely on that. Goat facing Trav. Left arm in. Full oh, one that time. Full. Marty. Just Nicely hit. Yeah. yeah. Didn't probably quietly chastise himself for not picking the gap, but uh, runs off every ball. Very important. Travi in for his third. Short. That's. Oh. He saved the six, I'm almost sure. Managed to ping it in just over the head of the very tall Dane. And uh, they end up with two. Fantastic work from Lido. He saved four runs there. Not sure whether they would have picked that up in the coverage or not, but uh, certainly was a fantastic no, he, he did beautifully well. And... Uh, He'll have a joke at his own expense, Lido, about um, getting a little older than he used to be, but uh, 37 off 20 and, and efforts like that show that uh, he's still got what it takes. Beautiful shot, uh, that one. They tickle it out to mid-wicket. They're definitely looking to double up a lot here. No such chance there. So Leiden Gibbons saves four runs with that effort. Was going for six. Ended up with two. Will that be a factor? I think it will be. Yeah, <laughs> could be very close this one. Travi Harker, f Back one more to go in his spell. Yep, changing angles. Wide of the crease. In. Marty. Oh, that's, that's gone. gone. Oh, oh, geez. I think. I yeah, I, listen, yeah. I thought that was going a lot further over, but yeah, I so think did that. I. Uh, I think Dane's actually just blocked a catch. Yep, Lido probably had that covered. Yeah. It definitely got a fingertip on Dane. Possible ricochet, and that's six. Wow. Now, if the moment before wasn't a big one, that will be. Turning point. Travi finishes his spell one for 25 or four. Could have been two for 19, to be honest, but one for 25 or four in a match where 8.55 is the required rate is fantastic stuff. 101 or 55, mate. They are mm. well and truly in this. Yep, they've kept that rate in the low nines, the required rate, that is to say. And uh, Marty now, three sixes in his 31 or 15. They're taking the risks. I mean, now we're, they're batting against the wind. So with those three sixes in the last few overs, they made sure that uh, they got a few, 71 after 10. Oh, sorry, we're only nine in. One more over of uh, with the wind. Indeed. Oh, lovely bowling there. Lovely Chris bowling. Ronnie Corbett on, dot up straight away. Yep. Looks like he should be faster, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> they're really just dawdling down there, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Day four of the tournament. Looks like might have been seized up a little. Good bowling, though. Yeah, yeah. A dot and a one. Bro, it's punching nicely. Batting in the slipstream at the moment. Marty taking a lot of pressure off him. 31 off 15. Brody moving to 14 off 12. In again. Oh, Around the corner, that'll be oh, well hit. Yeah, good pick up there. Trav ain't missing that. No way. And that's possibly the second. Yeah, Marty wraps himself on the pads. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think, I think that one was there to go, to that be honest. Should have gone for four. I think uh, he thinks. I possibly agree with him. That's wide of off stump. Punched into the gap. No run. Great fielding. G moves well out there. All those little moments are going to matter. 98 needed, 51 balls, 
back up towards that 10 and over. Wide again. I'll yeah. take a single. I think both of those, you could have left both of those and they probably would have been called a wide. Um, yeah, definitely. Tough call in this sort of format, but... Um, it is. Tidy over. Chris Corbett burns through his first, just the four from it. So 97 required off 50. I was talking to Marty yesterday and he sees every over and every ball within that over as a mini battle to win or lose. I think the trade has definitely won that little battle. Absolutely. The second 11 won the last few in uh, the previous overs. Okay, we're halfway, Pete. 4 for 75 off the first 10 with the wind. Need uh, 97 from 50 off the next 10 against the wind. Halfway through the wickets as well. I think given the start, I think that mm -hmm. uh, Marty will be... Hit, uh, well, I won't say ecstatic. I don't think Marty hits ecstatic until he's taken a wicket or wins the game. But yeah. um, uh, I think he's going to be well pleased with, with the position they find themselves in now. Good recovery. I think that even from your or my point of view is we've gone from a situation where tradies were well and truly on top and... and you know, the pressure was on. You've seen the class of these two batsmen um, really not take it away, but put them back in s with a chance. Back now, into I the think. game, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And we were looking four for 32 or five overs. Yep. A couple of little errors in the field there from, from the tradies. You know, a, a catch that probably should have been taken. Um, yeah. You know, a misfield or two. I mean, that four or run. Lydon coming in. Whoa! Bowled him straight away. <laughs> straight away! Oh my goodness! Marty what Wooden. a Got start! It. That is a great Marty. start. Yeah. Straight under the money. Wow. Big big moments. Wow. I did not see that coming. Well, Lido, I couldn't tell if he was serious or not before that he was now bowling leggies. But, well, he uh, is. That's very serious. <laughs> that is a wonderful start. I have to wonder though. Is I I think that was a little fuller than Marty was expecting, and, De and, and you know. I think normally, I think he would have flicked that off his legs, and, and uh, anyway, wow. Yeah, let's wow. have a look, just looking at the replay, yeah, I think you're right, it was fuller, it drifted, held up in the air a little, and it was fuller than he anticipated, going for his favoured cut shot just behind point, uh, which would have enabled two or f even four, so the shot was probably oh. on initially, fuller than he thought. Too close for cutters. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> He'll be disappointed after another excellent innings. 33 off 18 with three sixes. Kept him, kept his boys right in it. We're at a scenario now. 97 needed, 49 balls. Yep. Kubo in again. That was the wrong one. Telegraphed it a bit, but still a good ball. We've got Cameron Ingle. The new batsman. Nerdling it down to third man. That leaves us with Corey Marshall to come in after right. this. Because he's uh, a mainstay of second 11. Can hit a big ball too. Can hit, definitely. Lots of wickets as well. Definitely plays for the team. Can't help but think a lot rests on Kenyon's shoulders now though. But again, we come back to that situation. He picks up his 50. You know, there have been a lot of questions this week actually about, um, you know, um, spirit of cricket and oh, lovely Ball again. Bowl. Beautiful shot, though. Open the face there. Just nudges it down to backward point. Um, about the, you know, deliberately running yourself out um, or, or attempting to do that. Um, I think there's some, some work to be done to sort out a, a, an answer to the question. But, I mean, from my point of view, I think that... Um, oh, good bowling again. You just don't have to take the wicket. <laughs> yeah, of course. Think, there's always know. there's always game within a game. The very nature of the retirement, which I 100% agree with, it's all about inclusion. LMS create scenarios like that, and uh, you know there's some tactics involved. But uh, people are always going to oh. test those rules. And again, Gibbo, he, he's fond of a wrong and he's landing them beautifully. Honestly, I um, I watched uh, Wayne Martin in our NCT8 side this year. I've not seen him bowl, and he bowled leggies the whole tournament. And apart from our last game, and I think Wayne I would, would would say that as well. He was just dropping the ball on the spot just like that and really making the batsman have to force the play. So, I mean, your choice there is attack him. Yep. And if you're going to do that, you're going to have to have your head over the ball and Absolutely. you're still then really probably only punching ones and twos mm. um, or stand and deliver and try and yep. hit, a, hit with the spin or across it and, and either of those has got <laughs> massive danger on it. 
Um, a good spinner in T uh, T20, in particular LMS, is a major asset. Ronnie Corbett in again. Punched out to the covers. Coverage. Great slide. Yeah. They'll get two, though. Yeah. So Brody, Brody needs to be the, the dominant partner here and, and really sort of um, uh, up the ante. But oh, with bowling like that, it's, he's going to struggle to really... Well, that's right. Shots. I mean, Travi Harker burned his four. Could have had two for 19, but ended with one for 25 or four. That's a long way under required rate. Dane Seed, uh, two for 16 or three. One to come two from the big guy, so... That's right. Yeah. You know, they're going to have to target someone in soon. Call oh, it all. Nick down. You'll take those. You'll take those. That won't oh, go, I don't think. You think? You think? Oh, right in front of us. Yeah, Got a foot inside the boundary there. Great arm back to the keeper. Yeah, good, good throw. Good running from second 11. I'm not prepared to call this game yet. I got, well, no, no, I, no, no, um, I'm right with you on that. I think that uh, looking... Um, Broads looks good. Hasn't been a false shot yet. That's right. Um, I think. Not at all. Noodling. It's a wide. No. 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 Inside the marker. That's fair play. Yep. With my angle, I got that one wrong. Oh, that's okay. Mate. I'll Look. cover you from this side. Thanks, Pete. A <laughs> little bit of shape. Yeah, I Broad, think... Broads won't sweat those at the moment, though. Oh, I love the bowling. Well, the corner. Around. There'll be two there. There will indeed. Or oh, possibly even three. Oh, no, definitely not three to Trav. Not that's on that that's arm, Travi. That's unfair. But listen, I think um, that ball before that, I think in other games... I think Brody would have had a go at that and really tried Absolutely. to you know, smash it out through the offside here. But um, he knows that he's the one that has to, you know, tie this together now. Yep. Um, I think he'll uh, look to Michael Bevan this, oh, get absolutely. as close as possible with minimising the risk. So that's 12 gone, 5 for 87 on the board, current run rate 7.25, required 10.63. We're getting up towards Pete's 11 and five wickets down is a factor. But 85 from 40, that translates to. And uh, as we've seen before, one or two heavy overs. But the traders have done a fantastic job in their first 12. And uh, Lido's first over one for four was a major moment. Good ball again. Oh, Spalded. that's gone. Yes, Gibbo, seriously. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a bit blown away. A lot of chirp on the um, uh, on the Facebook feed from the boys from the Rock Lobsters. Plenty of time on their hands at the moment, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of rivalry between these teams. I think I think if you look at those four or five sides, I'm going to say five only because we finished fifth. But <laughs> if you look at those top four sides, uh, there's a really good youth component in those sides that they're going to be around for the next three, oh, four, absolutely. five years competing Exciting. against each other and they're, they're always going to be taking it to each other, I think. Absolutely, um, and Lido remarked earlier on when he guest commed that uh, he and his boys have known the second 11 lads for nearly, maybe, maybe even seven years now and uh, a lot of respect for one another and um, some good friendly banter. But, um, absolutely. Yeah, there's... Uh, this is wonderful from Tradies. And uh, Lido, 2 for 4 off 1.1 to go with his 37 off 20 to really give the uh, the middle to late overs of the Tradies innings a real shot in the arm. You really have to give it to um, uh, to Dane, I think, who's set up this ability Definitely. for him to, for, for Lydon to come in and bowl full and at the stumps. Um, if, uh, if he'd gone for another 10 at that front end of the innings without the wicket, you know, all of a sudden, those full balls are, uh, are being, you know, dispatched to all parts of the ground. But um, as we said, uh, Corey coming to bat now, um, he won't be afraid to go after it. And there, and no, listen, I'd say he's got license here because I, I would say so. Brody batting on his own, I think, is an asset to them. Oh, that's a lovely opening shot. Well played, it's great. wicket. There's Just the, the uh, one. Lido wrong and again. So Cosby will either stay very busy here, which he's more than capable of doing. Played a lot of games. Uh, or use that license, Kenyon. Yeah, because I mean, if if um, if Corey goes early, um, you know, a, ma a batsman like um, Kenyon on strike on his own. Oh, <laughs> although, although, a chance. <laughs> wow. Although, if, 
Light is going to continue to bowl like that. It's going to be... Um, Goodness me. Wow. I think that might have been a chance. Yeah. yeah I think there might the have blade. been some glove in there, yeah. Yep. Light a, a wry smile. Kenyon not engaging at this moment. He'll be very focused. He moves to 24 off 20. Lido 2 to come in the over. 2 for 7 off 1.3. Second Light. 11, 6 for 90. 82 more needed. 37 balls. And again, Roll full. again. Oh. Punch down. Clever from Broads. He gives Cozzy one ball to see what he can get up to. Well bowled, well played. Kenya will probably see the value in uh, ensuring Corey can face quite a few balls before the pressure's really on so that he can build an innings and get set as well. So give me the breakdown again, mate, on uh, what... Uh, 80 or, oh, sorry, there it is. I think 80, 80 off 35, 35 now, so seven overs of five balls. So required rate, 11.43. Marty running out, possibly fresh gloves for Kenyon. So the heat is on. So that's just above my call of 11. It is. And uh, we're within the sevens. Yep. I, so seven um, to go. Oh, jeez. Super over? <laughs> <laughs> I think I just want to see a super over. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd love to as well. And I, I, I backed second 11 when we spoke earlier yep. for the whole cup. And uh, the... They're not dead yet, that's for sure, but traders have been wonderful, and 6 for 92 off 13, if you offered that to them at the start of their bowling innings, they'd have taken that Absolutely. without a, a hesitation. In comes Corbett. Oh, lovely. Lovely length. Yeah. And again, I feel that he's probably bowling, well, he's... He's bowling, bowling well within himself, because he's well just noodling that down the, the end there, just rolling the fingers across the ball. I think we've seen it though in the big bash in the last few years though as well. We're, we've probably got away from it a little bit. We started really with the, you know, the off spinner or the left arm orthodox coming in and bowling those early overs, and then that's right, burn one or two of that shot. Oh, that's punched into the shot. covers. Oh, good pick up. Good pick oh, up. Pick up and throw. Unable to stop the two. Yeah. Marshall's very quick. Kenyon's fit as they come, and yep. it was well wide. So Brody, as you can see, it was, it was a lovely cricket stroke. Mm. And he'll be hoping that half of those go to the pickets and the other half he'll pick up twos. He'll be looking to punch those gaps. Marshall just making a small adjustment there. Corbett in again. Full. Brode's only able to punch down for a single this time. Nathan Tyrrell saying Brody Kenyon's his favourite ginger-headed cricketer. I won't take that personally, Nathan. Although I think there's more argument to say I've got more grey than ginger these days. <laughs> Lovely shot out there through cover and yep. coming back for the two. There was always going to be two there, well I think. Well placed. Oh, no, not out. Yeah, just home in the end. But, yeah. um, you know, Marshall's played four days of cricket and he's fresh to the crease. Won't have batted a lot this tournament. Oh, mate, if there's anyone that I've seen in all of LMS that can smash it between the wickets to Tim. <laughs> exactly. Oh. I think he's just taking a moment to warm into this inning. He's got speed to burn. But he has plenty in the tank. So Corbett, one to come in his third. Has none for 18. Doing a very good job here for his boys, the tradies. Second 11, 6 for 98. Oh, back to the bowler. Oh, oh. Puts it down. <laughs> wow. Because he will retain strike. Corbett pondering what might have been there. That would have opened up a last man scenario with 30 balls left and 73 still needed. So getting away a little bit here. but So guys, again, who I know obviously we've got a lot of people in from on the live feed from, from Wollongong and there's a lot of Queenslanders in there, but tell us where you are from around the world watching, uh, watching this live coverage here of... Uh, Finals day for the 2018 Last Man Stands Oz Champs. You can follow that live score on lastmanstands.com forward slash live dash scores. Please share the feed with uh, your friends and family that love cricket. Share it with the people that you don't know that love cricket. Surely there's everything to love about this. Oh, beautifully Indeed, over the bat no. there. Lido again, they'll definitely get two. Jezza coming down to get that. Yep, easy to. Oh, oh Miss Field. 
Oh, I think he just saved it. Yep. No touch on the uh, the blue. I'll give him that one. He'll be disappointed. Enabling the three, enabling uh, Kenyon to get onto strike. Lido, two for twelve of two point one. <laughs> Nathan Terrell has moved to Nigeria. Interesting, Nathan. You must be the guy that sends me all those emails. <laughs> um, Daniel Hamilton from Ipswich. Al Phoenix from Ipswich. Great oh, support boys. for their sides. I grew up in Ipswich. All good bowling. He's not afraid to use that wrong. Trickled down to third man. The ball like a magnet down there now. 69 from 28. Kenyon on to 29 of 24. He's looked very good. He'll be pacing himself. Gibbo in to Cozzy. That's Good wide ball. down leg side. Probably the first stray from Lido. I think that Lydon to, to Corey, I think he's prepared to give him a little bit more flight. I and agree. See what, he, see what he'll do. Let those eyes light up. Yep. Corey will be looking to hit one of those spectators over there at Cal. Yep. That's the wrong... Oh, oh no, it's not. Oh, that's a lovely ball. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit of sharp turn there. Yeah. Not a lot you can do with that. Variable bounce, just a little bit. One to come in the third for Lido. Oh, there we go. Down See. goes oh. the feet, hit straight. I don't think he got it. Yeah, just the one. Might have been a fingertip on that as it, it must have passed. been. And that is another good over. Gibbons now 2 for 14 off 3. 68 required from five overs, 25 <laughs> balls that translates to. We're looking at 13.6 there. Paul Marchese watching from the Mirage Marina. Cocktails up, going up there, Paul. So, yeah. oh, Rick Daly watching from a few blocks down the road. Welcome to the coverage. Paul, Paul Gibbo is bowling very well. We've both been... Um, uh, Surprised and slightly yeah. enamoured. Plenty of praises with, uh, to sing. Absolutely. I think that Rai smile belied uh, some serious ability. Never takes himself or the game too seriously, Gibbons. But uh, Ronnie coming on the ball, his last. Cosy on strike. Oh, ball love the struck. Shot. Straight to the man. That'll be a single. Square again. Jeez, it's getting to the point where it might be time to move. But <laughs> Nathan Tyrrell with a Cosgrove joke. Oh my goodness, sir. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. Ruthless. Let's go, Brody, from uh, Al Phoenix. Ronnie in. That oh, very wide. wide. It's into the gap. They yeah. probably double up. I don't think you're going to get past that young man out there. He's no, got he some wheels well. on the boundary. Good coverage there. Well. From Good Jordan. running. Yep. Going to need plenty of those. I'd like to say that uh, Ronnie was deliberately pointing that, but it was looking like it was a little bit tired in the way that arm was coming it through there. Fell away a bit, didn't it? A little bit. So he's bowled very well, uh, conceding 22 runs off 17 balls thus far. Way under rate. Around oh, the corner. shot. That's, That's four. four bits. Great yep. shot. Just Lovely. straight a bit there. Yep, down early for it, around the corner. Beautiful shot. And uh, that might be the gear shift that Kenyon was looking for. It's tough though. This is where Michael Bevan, MS Dhoni, people like that really come into their own because there's still a lot of cricket to be had. So many runs required, but plenty of time still. Absolutely. Plenty of time. I think, you know, Brody knows that as well. I mean, ice go through that man's veins. I mean, you, I rarely if ever see him uh, distracted. In Absolutely. The field. Very focused young man. And again. Straight punch. He sees the value in that. There's only one ball left in the over now. I think the confidence in, the, in their team also is also within their teammates. You know, in a lot of other LMS games in this format, you know, that batsman wouldn't have been taking that one, but he's yep. got that confidence in Corey to That's right. go do that. Goes up and under. Yep. It's safe and it's oh, saved. Oh, well picked up. But and they're coming back for three. Yeah, I think just oh, no, two, two in the sorry. Two, yes. So that's a, a perfect outcome for the second 11. Cosy takes two more onto the score, and Kenyon will take strike. Four overs left, 58 required. You'd have to say Gibbo to bowl out. He's going for 4.6 and over at the moment. In a game that started with 8.5 as the rate required, so... Grover's tizzers idle from Paul Marchese. 
there's some there's some good fun there's some good fun banter. Um, there is indeed. Counting online today. James Kane thinks Kenyon is timing his run here. I, I tend to agree, mate. Um, We've got a chicken snitty on this, James Can Kane. So uh, there's a lot riding on it in the commentary booth. Yeah. I think uh, I might even place an order for one of those from Beck's Kitchen very shortly. <laughs> Just for the break between games. Lydon Gibbons coming on again, looking very Shane Warren. Bending in that uh, wrong and they've moved that man quite straight down at third man. Kenyon uh, was always ever, only ever going to take one there. I think we might see Marshall have a go here. He might try and mow one right over that tree out at Cow. He's going to the corner. There he will. That'll Big chase from the Trav. outfield. Poor Travi. He'll get there. Finds the extra yes, gear. Yes, Travi. Yeah, well inside. And Great work from the old man. Broads pushes hard, so gets to three. Yeah. So short of the boundary, it puts Kenyon back on strike and only one run less. That's a pretty good outcome for second 11. Trady's still well on top. Three a ball needed now. The gamesmanship there, I think, from Broads. He's sucking him in. Yeah, indeed. He's fitter than just about 98% of the people here. <laughs> oh, He's hit it sure. well. Yeah. That is a bit tired, though. I might be... Mm. Um, I uh, take that back. I think maybe uh, Broads is struggling there with getting some oxygen in. Yeah, running threes is never fun. <laughs> I mean, it's easier for some, but... Yeah, that was... He dragged that one down, Lido. And uh, got away with it. Just the one. Welcome to the coverage, Phil Callahan and Mark Roberts. I can see you coming up. Just tickled away for one. So Lido, one ball remaining in his spell. Two for 20 thus far. Wonderful. Absolutely. And two very wonderful wickets there on that sort of middle and big wickets too. Oh, down the Goes ground. The it is, is that safe. safe. Back for we'll two. Back, yeah. We'll put the pressure on the keepers then. Smart move there from the fielder. Yep. So a spell Brady. of leg spinning from Lido finishes at two for 22. Off four. Um, so now 50 or 15, aka three overs. It, it, you know, tradies with each over like that move further and further ahead. But I can't help. I will never quite ride off the second 11. I've seen them win from too many insane positions. But the tradies have been ahead from the very moment uh, the excellent Brody Dwyer fell in the first over to the equally excellent Travi Harker. Corey Marshall doing a good job here, 17 off 13. Plenty of pats on the back to the boys from Marty. He'll have plenty to say. Mostly encouragement, I'd have thought. Always encouragement from Marty. Someone remarked earlier that... Uh, Marty drinking water, that was his downfall. That's a new thing. <laughs> Some quality chat there. Yeah, it's generally a Jim Beam and Cola. Even the goat gets thirsty, I suppose. Cozzy on strike. They'll push hard. I don't think they'll get two there, though. No, I think it's pretty safe to leave, uh, leave Brody on strike for uh, yeah, this one. Reese Finn has one for 28 off just 11 balls bowled. This is the man they'll probably have to target, um, simply for the fact that the rest of them have been so tight. Kenyon, oh yeah, that would indicate as much. Yep. Kept a little low, but... Um, you have to say, though, as well with this bowl, he hasn't bowled badly. No. I mean, one of one, one of them was an overthrow that was a four-all yeah, run. You know, and then we had, the, I think, the missed catch yep. you know, as well. Um, you know, he's been a bit unlucky, I think. Taking the pace of it, off cutter style, it will fall short. Yeah, smart move though from the fielder, just yeah. to let it bounce. And 47 from 12, getting close now to uh, to curtains for seconds. Got it? No, he didn't. They'll have to double that. Again. Corey running well. Kenyon putting in the big ones yeah. gets home. So 45 from 11, over four a ball needed now. Tradies just suffocating uh, throughout the innings. It's been a very good performance.
Oh, shot. That is out. No, maybe just four. Yeah, yeah. one bounce four. four. I think that's probably indicative of, of the, the sort of uh, lethargy there um, from Broat. I'm wondering maybe whether that hit to the um, the nether regions earlier is uh, playing a part in this, actually. Um, could well do, could well do. So finishes with a boundary, but uh, they need 4.1 a ball now. So, I mean, we're going to have to see some real fireworks in this over. Let's not forget the, the home run looms large. So for it to be a home run situation, they'd still need 29 off the next nine balls. And even uh, then, if based on the first three overs that this man's bowled, I can't mm. see that happening. I, uh, but there's been a lot of twists and turns in this match already. Indeed. Um, Kenyon to 46 off 33. It's been a good innings. It's just been against the grain. Corey Marshall, excellent support. 19 off 15. Absolutely. So tight early on, though. Seriously, I'd take Corey in my team at number eight any day of the week. <laughs> For sure, definitely. Dane in. Angling uh, in, dot there ball. There we go. Great bowling there, That's keeping it wide. That's going to hurt. This is the end too, Dane, where um, if you get that ball outside wide and the batsman's not moving his feet, you are going to get a little bit coming away. I don't think it's, I've seen it settle. Um, no, absolutely. He's executing his plans, and he has done all spell. I um, Good ball. They have to run. I actually think he's bowling a bit quicker this last over than he was <laughs> for the first three. I, maybe... Well, he's with the wind now, I suppose. That, that's a factor. <laughs> you think that's pushing him along? I might be helping, the, <laughs> helping him along. Oh, he's a solid unit. 40 off 8. Trade is well on top. Oh, back down. Clank, oh, they'll wow. have to come back. Cozzy up to the task, of course. Hats and everything flying around the outfield. Takes Kenyon to 48 off 34, but really that's not of any consequence at the moment other than for his stats. He probably really needs to launch this one into space. Yeah, um, it simply has to go. And so does the next one. Yep. Oh, that's a super ball. That is a fantastic piece of bowling there. 38 from 6. Just so, three off this over so far. 38 from six. Take that back down to 26 off four. Yeah, it's getting mathematical now. Dot ball here, and that might be it, I think. Oh, Got there it, it is. That'll there it is. No, it's good. Yeah. Oh, that's the six. It's cleared the pickets. Yeah. Well. So Coz is on strike, let's not forget. And he's done very well to get to 20 off 17, but I think he, even he'd admit... Kenyon needs to be on strike for the bulk of the next over. 32 from 5. Dane Seed finishes a wonderful spell. 2 for 25 or 4 to go along with Trav Harker's 1 for 25 or 4. 3 for 50 or 8 overs between them means that uh, they left their boys with 131 to defend or 12 overs. Now, listen. Reese Finn. He's gone for 35. This is a big ask. It bowls loose mm. to either of these guys, and yeah. things will get tight. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. In, this is a big ball for the match. There, that's it. And it's a dot. Yeah. yeah that is that is serious clutch bowling, I think, from yeah. from the man who, who got a bit of stick early doors. Popped a bit of stick, but yeah. Well executed plan. I think if I was Corey here, I'd be taking guard on or outside off stump and yeah. then forcing him to, you know, bowl at me. Definitely. Um, oh, that's a great... Seriously, I'm impressed by the way this man's finishing his innings. Yeah. I, I think... Um, we saw a similar case with Sean Thienu. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. None for 42 off three. Went even greater distance and executed two for two off his last. Yeah. Very good from the young fella. Arrowing in again. Yeah, there's the last one. That'll that's be probably out. Out. Yeah. Well, um, listen, I, I've been impressed with both sides here today. Yep. I think s plenty of sides would have um, just crumbled uh, under the, the early wickets. Second 11 showing their class, I think, again. Um, tradies. Brilliant. Yeah. I, Brilliant and deserving. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, they, they you know, we, we've been ringing the praises of the second 11 and they've earned those oh. up it goes 
If he catches this, it'll be well deserved. Oh, it's a great effort though. <laughs> wow. I can understand the disappointment for, for Brode here. I mean, he knows that he, he can't he sort of take it, but dude, I, th I think maybe take take your red ink and, uh, and know that you've done the right thing by your side. But um, listen, another fantastic tournament from second 11. Absolutely, and they um, should be proud, and I'm sure they would be. Yeah. They might uh, be disappointed that not to get through the big dance, but uh, again, very good as usual. Yeah, that's and oh, yeah. around the corner. He'll probably get four. take four and innings and game set match for the tradies. Wonderful win and a victory uh, by 27 runs in the end. Reese Finn finishes two for 39 or four. Very impressive. Very, Very impressive, good. really. He uh, held his nerve. Brody, wonderful 58 not out off 38 and. Uh, an excellent uh, Lydon Gibbons taking the wicket of Marty at that stage of the game and with Marty where he was was probably a defining moment. Absolutely, I think that um, you know I'm, I'm really impressed with Reese given you know I think he was going into that over uh, none for 35 after three overs That's right. finishes with two for 39 as you say very similar to Thinner's um, uh, you know results in the first dig. Lydon with some really impressive figures and I'm loving the fact that Lydon's taken two for 22. <laughs> Um, Especially as a leg spinner. <laughs> Absolutely. Up, up, um, uh, Travis with his one for 25. Um, Dane Seed, uh, Seed probably, I would think, has ended up with man of the match, I would think. You'd have um, to say so. With his 50 from 32 plus those wickets. Yeah, um, equal most wickets across the game. Reese McCarthy will be, a, will be a close. I guess it'll be strike right there between those guys yeah. for, for points. Um, it was an all-round effort. I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I can't say that that was... a. Uh, a map, like, it wasn't anything special about what um, tradies did. Uh, so just you know, executed plans absolutely. From I, th the I think so. Definitely. I mean, it's been a wonderful game to commentate. I think there's been plenty of action from both sides. Um, I think uh, second eleven, you uh, hold your heads high there. I think you really represented uh, Ipswich and uh, and your follow as well. They sure did. Um, tradies, well, you've done the same for for the home club, and uh, you're into another national champs. I think tradies will be. Um, uh, they will be remiss if they take uh, enjoy the mint lightly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think they've had a chance now to have a, a bit more of a breather as well coming into the final. Um, I think that, it, I, I, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot on display. A lot on display. A lot of legends of, of LMS involved. Mate, I have no idea which way this one's going. Tradies were clinical then. Second 11, world-class team. And a 27-run win is sound. Um, both sides should be proud of the tournaments that they've had. Tradies through to the big dance against Enjoy the Ment. And uh, we'll be back pretty shortly, I think. Maybe about 20 minutes or I so. I think about 20, 20 minutes 25. or so for the final. Um, thanks Cheers. again uh, for commentating that, mate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. I hope we uh, get to, to do the final as well. Yeah, so do I. Thanks to everyone watching. And, uh, wherever you are, and, and we've got another Jaffa coming up here. And, and Beck, if you're listening, uh, two, uh, two Snitty Burgers, please. Uh, we'll be on our way. <laughs> and I have to fund them both. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you in a bit, guys.